Hello, folks. Welcome to Nate Land Podcast. I'm Nate Bargetsy, Brian Bates, Aaron Weber. We are here. We are back. Uh, we made it through. Uh, I hope you. Well, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Hope you had a good time. Everybody, you guys did. Y'all had a good one. Everybody yeah. did good. Yeah. Great. Traveled a lot. Uh, did you? Yeah, you loved it. Did you go everywhere? No, I don't Traveled like everywhere, good. dude. Yeah. Here he goes. Here it goes. How many states were you in? Left your mask at I home. I was all over. I left it at home, dude. I don't. <laughs> I don't have to. Did you go? Did you go to any town that uh, cares if you wear a mask or not? <laughs> I went to Dallas. It was a major American city. They were everybody's wearing a mask. Uh, you stopped along the way though, some places. Yeah. Did you drive to Dallas? <laughs> no, I took a plane. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's all good. right. Good. That's good. Uh, no mask on the plane. Were you a guy that wanted to be confrontational about it, <laughs> no, and no. you don't wear it, and hope someone you wear it and show it to the aisle, <laughs> hoping someone goes, "Where's your mask?" Oh, the mask don't mean anything. <laughs> and you start yelling at him. Uh, uh, all right, no, he wears a mask. I don't, you know. So what if someone takes it serious? You know, they might. And they think you don't. Uh, yes. So yeah, we had a good Christmas. Uh, we did it uh, here. And that was it. I did what you're supposed to do. We stayed. We zoomed our family. Uh, uh, I zoomed Louis Katz, my buddy Louis Katz, very funny comedian. Uh, so uh, we're gonna get into the comics. A lot of stuff happened this week, actually, especially in Nashville. And uh, so we're gonna talk about that. Uh, but we're just wait and talk about it after the after the comments. So we're just gonna go ahead and get into it because uh, we did the Krispy Kreme challenge. We did it. Which we can't talk about that because I'm sure a lot of a lot of these are about Krispy Kreme. Some. Uh, we did do it. We went. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I think it was the video was good. The video was funny at least. Yeah. I think Brian was the clear, the clear winner. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, mean, I won, but <laughs> the let <laughs> the letdown that you you gave two boxes of letdown. Uh, if we're talking just sheer numbers, I won, but Brian. It didn't phase you at all, man. I was watching back. I was like, "You don't look. You look perfectly fine." Yeah, I'm training for this, man. Could have went to twelve. <laughs> you think you could have got to twelve? Uh, I'd been hurting if I got yeah. to twelve. Yeah, I don't think I could physically do it. Chocolate was a mistake. Was. I knew it after the first bite of the first one. Yeah, but I've had Krispy Kreme twice since the Krispy Kreme <laughs> challenge. Really? Yeah, I've had it twice. I've had a total of uh, <laughs> seven of them twice. <laughs> so I mean, it didn't. You know. I didn't want to do any long-term damage <laughs> to my Krispy Kreme eating. Right. I'm I'm the most consistent. Krispy That's probably Kreme true. Eater. Yeah. How did you guys feel on stage that night? A few hours later, performing. I was fine. I, uh, you know, I eat so bad that my body recovers quick. Hmm. I mean, it's just like it is what it is. I usually eat real healthy, so I usually. Uh, <laughs> so you felt it. <laughs> you felt a little more. Than I felt usually. it for a few hours afterwards, but we had enough cushion between then and the show. Yeah, I felt all right. Yeah, <laughs> they just raised a lot of money for the food bank that night. <laughs> uh, but I'm glad we got it out. I mean, that was a long. You know, this could be. What do we get? No, that everybody falls off now. Yeah, <laughs> no one's listening. <laughs> we should have played it for years. Casey Miller. I'm seriously not trying to get sappy, but the Krispy Kreme challenge came out the same day we had to put our nine-year-old dog down. It was the worst day ever. We came home afterwards and sat in our house in silence. I posted a memorial tribute to our dog, Reno, and sat in my chair and cried. Then I saw this. I can't tell you how much joy I felt. Seeing you guys doing something so dumb for your fans <laughs> made me feel better. I showed my husband and he smiled. Our days have been dark. This really helped us to laugh. And laughter truly is the best medicine, even for a broken heart. Thank you so much for great content that doesn't make you feel like you have to take sides. It's an hour and a half of fun. You guys are awesome. A great trio. Merry Christmas, Nate Land. Well, thank you, Casey. We're sorry. Yeah. Sad to hear, sorry to hear about your dog. And uh, glad you at least got, you know, something. You at least you got your mind taken away. That's, That's right. what we're here for. Right. Mm -hmm. We're not solving anything. <laughs> no. Uh, Tur Sigor. <laughs> uh oh. Tur Sigor. Listen, guys, I married Sore. We have a lot in common, most notably that we think this podcast had potential, but lost it around two episodes ago. 
We don't listen to it, just comment on it occasionally. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> wow. They That's got to, awesome. you know, we're bringing people together. Yes. They might hate it. Right. But they got to tell the story that we brought them together. Wow. Wow. Turler and Source Gorber. <laughs> That's very fun. Congratulations, guys. Uh, it's nice of Tur to take on Soar's last name. Yeah. That, yeah, that's, yeah. We, yeah, we don't. Soray Lur could have been the other one. I don't know if we even know what kind of couple this is, but <laughs> it's, uh, they're together. Good for them. Good for them. Tur Sigor. <laughs> Bob Lob Law. <laughs> <laughs> that's from Arrested Development. Oh, is it? Yeah, Scott Bayo's character on Arrested Development was Bob Loblaw, so they're having fun with that. Oh, Bob Loblaw. <laughs> I was like, man, what a name. This podcast is like an answer to a question that's never been asked. <laughs> I mean, we might put that in the bio. I was say, <laughs> I mean, that's that's that, a terrific summary. I mean, wow. That is our mission statement. Right. Yeah. That's what's great is, you know, because they always ask uh, – so people, the, someone's like, "What's your pod?" I'll do all these interviews promoting <laughs> this podcast, and they're like, "So, what's your podcast?" I'm like, "I don't know." It's like it doesn't matter. None of it matters. Hmm. It's you know, but I might say that it's like an answer to a question that's never been asked. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean, that's you know, uh, it's, all right. Kyle M, dear Nathaniel, I am a teacher in China, and I can't go one more day without you using the word "good" as an adverb. <laughs> The correct word is well. I've heard five-year-old Chinese kids speak better than you. One of them even has a guided horse. Perhaps Bridal Path should be catching these. Where, Kyle? Uh, well, Kyle. How about I tell you, I don't even, not really sure what an adverb is. So how does that make you feel? He gave an example here. <laughs> I didn't even pick up on it. <laughs> Where was the it's underneath it? Here's an ex it where it says, says here's an example. Oh, I've read. Oh, here's an example. <laughs> Incorrect. He plays golf good. Correct. He plays golf well. Uh, look, I'm not an adverb <laughs> guy, and I don't talk about adverbs. I don't think I've ever talked about them. He thinks a pronoun's a noun. That gets I say good. Paid I do to say good. Sentence. I say good a lot, but I will say I do know that when I'm saying good that. It's a lot of times it's not good, but I do it. It's saying it different, which sticks out. I'm in a job of words. So he plays golf. Well, I'm not going to talk like that. That doesn't fit. It's funnier when I say it's good. Good is what's funny. <laughs> yeah. That's what's funny. If it gets under your skin, that means it's probably a better way of being funnier. Mm -hmm. All your Chinese kids, you're not going to make it in comedy. if they. <laughs> You know, talk to them a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure they speak better than me. The, you know, but we're we're not competing for the same jobs. <laughs> Good on them. He spoke well. <laughs> uh, Aaron Weber. Going to save everyone some time and admit I mixed up Saint Nick and Saint Patrick. Guys yeah. has the same name as you. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up the night after we recorded the podcast in a cold sweat. I said, I realized what I did, and I'm going to get so much flack from people I for mean, that. I immediately got like four tweets about it. Like, you call yourself a Notre Dame alum. <laughs> you call yeah. yourself a Catholic. You're getting. Whoa. Yeah. So Good I had to him. hop in the con. I had to nip this in the bud. So I went on there and commented that. And uh, a lot of people picked up on it. A lot of people noticed. You There's know Too what? many people listening, man. They can't. <laughs> they get it, dude. Hey, well on you for correcting yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> you like that Kyle M yeah you happy now <laughs> Marty Wall sounds like a good sounds like an uncle mm -hmm. Marty Wall is that do you know him no I disagree with you oh feels like you, you would know him too <laughs> uh, who's going to dinner tonight I bates his buddy Marty Wall they went to college together uh <laughs> there you go. We get there. Marty's been there for an hour. Like, oh God, he got here early. I like how Aaron is coming into his own. The first few podcasts, he didn't say much and seemed like he didn't care to be there. <laughs> now he pitches in a lot and is hilarious. I agree, Marty. 
Thank you. Man. Yeah. What's your problem, Aaron? Yeah. Why you get you, sick of me real soon. I bet. Why don't you care to be here? You just wanted to be here? You had other stuff going on? Yeah. I just didn't want to come in. Dude, what if I came in episode one, came in hot and just talked the whole time? Hmm. It'd be You'd too be much. like, all right, Aaron, me and Brian are going to talk real quick. Yeah. yeah. I would have told you to your face. <laughs> I, mean, I took the computer away from Brian. I'm fine with, I'm fine with uh, correcting things. That's true. I'd have been like, calm it down. Thank you, Marty. Uh, yeah, Marty's right though. You have gotten better, so we'll let you know. Marty, keep an eye on it if you don't mind. Uh, Baron starts slipping. I'd like a little heads up because maybe I miss it. Maybe I'm in it, and I need you to eventually be gone. Well, you mentioned St. Patrick's Day last week. Is Santa Claus, so yeah, that's true. Maybe a little less. Yeah, maybe getting too much. Maybe that your saying. secret genius is almost like it's that's completely eroded. By the way, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't. Nobody's been saying that for a while. <laughs> eroded. Just <laughs> use words that are. So a secular word? We don't. We yeah. I, I just don't say these words. I would never say eroded. <laughs> Your back is the genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all it takes on this That's podcast. It, yeah. It's a sliding scale. <laughs> I push you back up. I'm a team player. That's like giving an alley oop. I just help. I give I got an assist on that. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Here we go. Amanda <laughs> Rosvogli. <laughs> it's actually not bad, man. That's not probably, bad. That's probably what I would have said. She turned around. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I think that's I good, think, actually. I think Amanda Rosvogli, I think she'd go, yeah. And she would just be like, I'm like, is that how you say it? She's like, oh, that's close enough. She yeah. wouldn't even try to correct me. Hello, folks. Love the podcast and all of Nate's work. As someone who has opened gifts on Christmas Eve, I wanted to clear up some of Nate's confusion over this. I'm Hungarian. And in Hungary, Christmas tradition is that baby Jesus delivers gifts on Christmas Eve, and they are open that night. Santa Claus or St. Nicholas or St. Patrick. Actually visit. <laughs> I, I threw in the St. Patrick. <laughs> Actually visits children on the eve of December fifth. <laughs> children clean their boots and put them in the window for St. Nick to fill with treats if they were good or cool if they were bad. Krampus. Krampus also comes this night stealing children who were bad. I can't remember if it was Brian or Aaron who said it. it might stem from a Central Eastern European tradition, but they were right. That was Aaron. There you go. That was there. You thought of it because of the children stealing. Uh, <laughs> is that correct? Right. That's the only reason you thought that? Yeah. You go, what is that, Russian for taking Well, that's St. Nick's Day. That's what I was talking about, where you leave your shoes out. Yes. Outside that was your it. room. Hungarian. Hey, uh, December 5th. I mean, well, y'all are just, you're like someone that celebrates their birthday for the whole week. <laughs> like you're, you're like, all right, this is enough. We got to do it every it's night. It's 25 days of Christmas, dude. Well, that'd be yeah. the 20 days. Yeah, they start on December fifth. <laughs> that's not when it starts. <laughs> well, that's but when the night. That's, days when, that's when Toyota Thon starts. Yeah. Are you confusing it with Toyota Thon? Yeah. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. That's what you are. You like Toyota Thon. Is that did y'all celebrate? We did that? have a Toyota growing up. Oh. <laughs> Toyota Previa. But you got a pretty good deal on it at Toyota Thon. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Toyota Thon. <laughs> we do Toyotas and we do them good. Uh <laughs> <laughs> that's I uh that's awesome. Uh Amanda. My my dad uh my dad they told me they they he did he got Christmas Eve presents. They did Christmas Eve presents. So yeah. he also was raised in uh rough childhood. So uh So we we just said our parents did it and now you found you found out your I think parents they lied did it. to my dad. And they, <laughs> I think my dad only got stuff Christmas Eve and his brothers <laughs> He goes, yeah, got for some more. reason, I got mine outside on Christmas Eve in the yard. Did everybody else do that? <laughs> uh, Adam Harold. Wait, what would you say? Sorry. Well, I was just pointing out that we pointed. We just said last week that we thought, thought our parents, that was their tradition of Christmas Eve. Yeah. And you kind of ridiculed <laughs> us for it. But now it sounds out like your parents Actually, also parents did that. Are, yeah. Well, I'll stand by the ridicule. Uh, <laughs> Adam Harold. The shame of not eating 36 donuts is nothing. One time I claimed that I could eat a whole box of Sam's Club members' marked fruit <laughs> snacks. <laughs> Sam's Club bulk box of 100 pouches of fruit snacks. So on New Year's Eve, we had friends over and I became the main event. Yeah, I ate 63 and had the most colorful night in the bathroom of anyone that night. 
consider yourselves lucky. <laughs> That's very funny. That's such a funny thing to say you could eat. I would say I could eat that. That might be the next one. I was going to say the old, the old me would have read that and gone, 100 pounds. I could eat 150 pounds probably. Now I'm... 80? Uh, yeah. I mean, well, the, <laughs> I the, the, number, 80, the number is 63 pouches. I, I, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I might, we might be able to give this one a go. <laughs> those, those pouches are unbelievable. You still got to do those little donut holes. I do got to get the donut Set a world record. Did you, someone uh, did a video of that. Mm-hmm. And they only got one, right? She got. Yeah, we reposted. What was her name? Do you know? Uh, I can look it up. But she got to her second one. Couldn't quite finish her second one. Yeah, it's the no water. That's the obviously the key. That's the kicker. That's like drinking a gallon of milk or something. Someone tells you to do that. You can't do it. Mm-hmm. I, these pouches might be. It might be next Christmas. Uh <laughs> What if that's what we'll do every Christmas? We just try to eat a bunch of stuff, <laughs> and we get better at it. Aaron, that's the goal of this podcast. You come out of it at the end of it, you're better. I could do ten we pouches. Have type seven diabetes, but we <laughs> are eating a ton said, of donuts and type seven. Well, I'm just making up. That's that's uh, called a comedy. I know. I know. I was saying it was funny. Oh, did you? Yeah, I wasn't. I don't think you got it. I don't know if you, you know, to go back to. Kyle, or uh, what's his name? Walter. Uh, what was his name? Marty Wall. Marty Wall. Please mark that down as Aaron being not getting <laughs> Uh It's one mark against you. <laughs> Joe D. Makes sense that Nate thinks the statistics are made up when he calculates the guy having a two out of four chance of winning an Emmy equal to 99%. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I, my words come out quicker than my brain can, get, can stop them. And that's where we get. In your defense, someone else commented on that and said it would be 50% chance. to, But they, but there was two winners, so it'd be more than 50. It'd be more than 50. Yes. Wouldn't be 99. No. But it'd be more than, more than 50. Because if there's two winners, he's two of the four. What would that be? 75? 75%? Maybe. Yep. 75%. <laughs> it's definite, uh, definitely 75. Let's go to the fact checkers. 75%. <laughs> Max Reiner. Uh, I tried fact-checking Nate's comment about Wayne Gretzky mail and couldn't find a single thing about it. <laughs> then later in the episode, he talks about scientists making things up. <laughs> Need beehive and Aaron to start holding him accountable. <laughs> hey, they let me fly, man. <laughs> Max, I just, I just floated out there. I think that's true. I Googled it last night and couldn't find that. Yeah, well, they don't let you look stuff. You think he wants that announced? <laughs> Wayne Gretzky put a stop to that. Someone told me, yeah, I don't know when I heard that. I heard that a long it was pr- before the internet when I heard that. <laughs> when you couldn't prove that. When you couldn't prove it, you just believed everything you heard. So I got a lot of stuff still stuck up there <laughs> that uh, you know, has some old in some old boxes. Brian Kennelly. Surprised Nate didn't point this out, but if Saint Nick was so humble that he snuck into someone's family's house to help them without them knowing to avoid hurting their pride. How did the story then not only get out? but get out to so many people that it became part of one of the biggest holidays ever. Seems like old St. Nick must have went about flapping his gums quite a bit after that movie. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I understood that in any of that sentence. Well, he's but basically... But if St. Nick was so humble, they snuck into some family's house to help them without them knowing to avoid hurting the pride. All right. How, does, how did the story then not, not only get out, but get... Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I was reading it, <laughs> and I was somewhere else. <laughs> uh, that was one you ever read something and you're like I'm not in this at all yeah so I'll go I, I like that yeah. that's actually a great point that is very funny that would be that you could do I mean Brian if you ever get in comedy you could do that as a joke <laughs> is he a comedian uh, who uh, that was Brian uh, Kennelly uh, I meant him uh, I <laughs> yeah I think you should get out of it and oh. actually open up a spot I thought Brian you were talking Kennelly. about me I was about to write this down no <laughs> I think if you'd open a spot up for Brian Kinley, we need another Brian. I was just so happy you were calling me by my name. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, thank you. Finally, some respect. Uh, no, that you could do that as a joke. That is a very funny joke. Yeah. yeah. To, that is a very, the idea that that's a, that, that almost, if someone wants to see how a, a joke can get started, like that's how, that's how I would look at his joke and see that, that's that thought process to think, yeah, how did, I mean, you got so many people. He, he's like, nah, I don't want to be obnoxious. And you're like, yeah, well, we're all celebrating. <laughs> Paul M.E. Mueller. I knew a Jamie Mueller. 
You guys left out the best story of St. Nicholas. He punched a guy at the council of Nicaea. 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 Oh, that was way up. That, he wouldn't have turned around. <laughs> a guy named Nicaea. He just, he's like, he would just keep walking. I and mean, this is a town, right? But if a guy was named Nicaea, if they had a cancel of it. <laughs> a guy named Arius was going on and on about how Jesus wasn't equal to God the Father. It really grinded Santa's gears, so he proceeded to slap or punch Arius in front of 300 bishops and Emperor, oh man, Emperor, Emperor Constantine. Ho, ho, heretic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What, heretic. You, heretic. <laughs> 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 I meant to take that line out. And yeah. I forgot. Sorry. You really? Well, I, have, I have a word with I'm have a word with abbreviations over here after the show. Uh, the council agreed with St. Nicholas's view, and that's how we got the Nicene Creed, which many Christians say every week. <laughs> Some good Catholic history right there. Yeah. Church history. Uh, first, Paul, is this Paul your first is, time hearing it? No, Arius, the Arian heresy, dude. I know what I'm saying because you don't know anything about your own people. Paul has commented uh, on every show, yeah, and uh, I appreciate all his comments. And this was a very good one. I missed this, but yeah, this, this was a good one. He got me. I mean, he got everything. This one got it. This was the whole. Aaron's never heard any of any of this, and even though he's ho ho heretic, ho ho heretic. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like well, you got to go to the doctor for that. <laughs> I have a heretic. Yeah, like, oh, that's not good. Uh, Brooks Neal. Imagine hearing Jordan talk about how many rings he's going to get, and then he never <laughs> makes it to the finals. That's what Nate and Aaron did with this challenge. In a thousand years, when history class is being taught on another civilian station, this will most definitely be germane, <laughs> but it won't be remembered as clutch. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I know what Jermaine means. <laughs> I think Aaron's used that word. Yeah. Do you? Y'all use it quite a bit? Yeah, I used it on the last podcast he made fun of me for it. It just means... Oh, so Brooks is... It making, just means oh, relevant. Good. A lot of inside jokes packed in there. Yeah, that, that, that was a lot. Yeah, wow. I don't think I, I forgot that. Brooks brought it. Brooks, Brooks brought the heat. Good job, Brooks. That's great. Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, we did it. I mean, that's... Uh, that was all of it. Uh we're about 15 com- minutes in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let me, all right. Let's read a couple more comments. We're making sure. We, uh, Mike Wilson, as a doctor, I just felt I need to clarify there is no nutritional benefit to eating your poop. <laughs> <laughs> it contains all the things your body didn't need and pushed out. I don't know how Aaron or Bo staff let the comments slip by so easily. This has quickly become my new favorite podcast. You are all awesome. Mike Wilson, a doctor, I go to him. Uh, I'm going to start going to him. Those are the kind of questions you bring to your doctor. That's, right? this, that would be, that's the kind of questions if you're a doctor in just some small towns, you just get people. I watched an episode of What's the Bear Grill Show? Man versus uh, Wild. Are you going to act like it? this is a documentary? Or is this a- <laughs> no, this is straight up television yeah. show. I watched this uh, show about survival, uh, Survivor, <laughs> you know, the, the game show. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it it a Bear thing. Grylls. Okay. He he picked up a piece, a huge piece of elephant. Yeah, I remember dung, this. Yeah. And squeezed the water out of it yeah. and Gosh. drank that. Yeah. I mean, there's nutritional value in there. That's what I'm. He's talking about eating it. Well, if you eat it, you'd get the water as well. You well, just the, get a bunch of other yeah. stuff. Well, the circumstances that he was in versus <laughs> just a monkey at the zoo. <laughs> You're right. A monkey that's got it, like living its best life, just at the <laughs> zoo. You know, mm-hmm. huh? you don't think it is? I think sometimes they have hard days. I think one of that one zoo got killed because that kid thing. But besides that, <laughs> <laughs> you think that's the only monkey who's having a bad time at the at zoo? zoo? They get one little island and that's it. But I, I think zoo. Well, most of these animals at these the zoos are they're there because they can't survive in the wild. You know, there's a uh, elephant sanctuary here. Yeah, down a hole in wild, and they take people's used Christmas trees, real trees, not artificial, because the elephants eat it. So there you go. You go tell me what's the matter, Aaron. You go tell me <laughs> that, that these elephants aren't living their best life. You're dude. right. 
You're right. I think these days, I think clearly Ambrose is Jermaine to you know, what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the flip side of this, I. Uh, it really has nothing to do with what we're talking Yeah. I, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, they let, uh, what's the, the killer well, Shamu. Mm -hmm. Like, so one of those, they let a killer, one of those wells back out in the wild was murdered immediately. Really? Yeah. By a dolphin. They're still, someone thinks they planted something on the dolphin. <laughs> but no, it was killed because it, it just didn't, you know. 60 Minutes did a piece on a guy, some billionaire who was buying up zoos mm. just so he could take the animals and put them back in the wild. Most of them, they don't make it. Just, I mean, <laughs> just getting slaughtered. It, I mean, like, look, look, we talked about Tiger King was, there's, there's definitely like bad things, but overall zoos, like I've gone with that Columbus Zoo, they're there. It's good. It's people trying to do good things for these animals and they're, of course, and they're hurt and they can't survive. There's... They really like try to reenact all those, you know, A and animals. Well, it's not an animal hospital, dude. It's not just a bunch <laughs> it, it, of it's, sick it, animals. It's, but, but they do have hospitals. Right, for they the do animals take there. care of them, but they don't just go around the wild, go, oh, this one's hurt. They Let's do. take it to the Little Rock They're, Zoo. Well, there's a doctor that lives in the wild, and the animals Mike go up Wilson. to it and goes, I have a fever. I'm going to need to spend the rest of my life in a in zoo. A zoo. You go tell me an animal loves a zoo. They're not a lion that lives a long, long life. I, they're they're injured, and that's how they get there. Like the one in there's eagles in. Uh, uh, we went to it, Hol uh, Dollywood. There's a whole exhibit with these eagles, but they can't fly, and so they could never make it. And they, I don't know if they, I think they, I'm pretty sure they can't fly. But they clip their wings so they don't leave. <laughs> no, no, they were all <laughs> they're true? injured. <laughs> You think so? You all think zoos are just terrible? No, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, just making kidding. a joke about that. Just kidding around. No, you, you do. No, you go to zoos. I go to zoos a lot, which is a great lead into our next question. Yeah. How often are you going to the zoo alone? That is yeah. crazy, Holly Carden. How often are you going to the zoo alone? That's crazy. I didn't even. I, we were just talking about zoos. I didn't realize that that was the next question. Yeah, last week you said we we're debating which one the exhibits you go see, like the snakes or whatever. And yeah. You go, uh, if I go alone, I might. A I few people are like, "You're going to the zoo alone?" <laughs> oh, I go alone <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I mean, all the time. I don't I, like this week. Uh, no, if I'm home with my family, obviously I'll go with my family, but. Oh, maybe you're on the road. We get it. You're opener. You might go with the opener, but I could go. I'd go alone. Hey, That's when I've gone. When I think I'm on the zoo. road and you're like, I got all day to just yeah, be yeah. by myself. Yeah. I'll just walk, walk around, around a zoo alone zoo. is great, man. If you, especially, I mean, I go to like going to a mall. I would look at it. It'd be better to me. It'd be better than a mall to me. If you could conveniently just kind of go in and out of a zoo and walk around alone. I, I would love every second of it. People need to be alone some. It's not bad. It's not bad to go do something alone. Holly Carton actually did my uh, album artwork. For me. Oh. She's a really gifted uh, illustrator. Oh, there you go. Nashville. Good job, Holly. Riley Box. The podcast has slowly become Brian doing research and creating topics. Nate coming up with hypothetical situations and Aaron <laughs> wheezing in the background. I'd say it's at its peak. Keep up the good work, especially you, Brian. You hold it all together. Thank there you, you go, Brian. I don't know yeah. if you did that last line. I know. I put that in, but the rest <laughs> yeah. of it, Raleigh well, wrote. Yeah. <laughs> Raleigh's like, those are not my words. <laughs> George Reiser. Hi, folks. So, yes, you do have people listening in Austria. Hey. Yeah. And, yes, we're doing all right as a country. Thanks for caring. Just wanted to clear up a few things about Krampus and St. Nick's Day. By the way, Aaron, December 6th. Someone else said December 5th. Mm -hmm. Or, no, they got the Eve was December 5th. Mm -hmm. Krampus wasn't as scary as a kid. Mostly hung out in the back while St. Nick visited. He asked you if you behaved that year. You said yes and got some treats. Transaction complete. <laughs> uh, so Krampus didn't really dive into it. You could just lie to the – you could lie to him. He didn't fact check you at all. He didn't yeah. fact check. Krampus just – you good? You go, yeah, you're – you know. And then it's probably actually only getting the good kids – that probably go, wow, I couldn't have been perfect, so I'm going to say no. And then he's still in good wow. kids mm. and the wow. bad kids. So he actually rewards. Because the bad kids are lying. Yep. The bad kids are liars. Wow. <sighs> it's a dark turn. This, uh, <laughs> 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 Kelly Jones, I'm with Aaron. We need structure. I came from a family where we took turns and thanked everyone in my husband's family, went at it like animals. Hmm. 
My first Christmas with them, I was stunned and shocked by the chaos. That is very funny to think. Like if you go into, you marry into it and you're like, oh, let's go see what their Christmas is like. <laughs> and you're this proper, you, you unwrap it, you throw the paper away immediately, then it just goes somewhere else. It's just a zoo. Yeah. yeah. It's probably good to have, marry into, you want to have both. So be like, our family's not crazy. You know, I I did a joke about that. Like, uh, some, I don't know if I ever said it anywhere. But I was like, you always like say, like, you always think you, your family you marry, you're like, that's people are crazy, right? Mm-hmm. We're not, we're normal, right? The kind of nut job they are. <laughs> and then you're like, well, you're probably the nut job family. <laughs> that's, uh, all right. Thank, thank you guys so much for the comments. We love it. As always, leave them on. Uh, you can email NateLand at Nate Bar, NateBargetti.com. Uh, Twitter. Facebook. Are we on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Instagram. YouTube, of course. YouTube. YouTube. All of them. We get a lot of them. We've been getting hundreds. We- well, this week, because we released Christmas and Krispy Kreme Challenge, we got about 400 total. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, yeah. We talked about this, right? Like, about, the, you know, 400. We get, yeah, because we can't read that many. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, make them good. And, <laughs> you know, make them good. That's what... You guys bring just as much fun to this podcast as we do. Uh, so Some would say more. A lot of people would say more. Actually, 400 <laughs> people would say more. The fact that uh, somebody made a YouTube account for Tur Tur Segor. Well, they got married, dude. No one just didn't make that up. You not believe in their marriage? Okay. You don't believe in their marriage is what you're telling me. That's clearly you think a, they would lie about a real this. thing. On the internet, you think they would lie about this? I'm sorry. I watched uh, Office last night where he goes, you found it on Wikipedia, <laughs> which is all information that comes from everyone in the world, yeah. so you know it's true. <laughs> so you know you're getting the best, best information. information. Yeah. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is a, a wonderful cereal, a healthy cereal. I'm a gigantic fan of cereal. I would eat it. That's what we always ate. As for breakfast, every breakfast, I was a big Frosted Flakes. I was, uh, I don't know, fruit, any fruity, chocolate, frosted cereal. I love them all. I think they're all great. Learn they're not good for you. You learn that <laughs> as you get older. That's something that's uh, just shocking to you because you're like, what's well, so good? Uh, Magic Spoon is awesome. It's the cereal that tastes like kid cereal. Zero sugar, 11 grams of protein, and only three net grams of carbs in each serving. Four flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blueberry. It tastes amazing. Honestly, it's just too good to be true. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. Cocoa is my favorite of the ones. It's a chocolate one. Uh, Keto-friendly is huge, too. I mean, you, you know, keto's sneaking around. And, like, if you ever want to – I've tried it. And it just feels like it's so hard. But with cereal now – that's pretty crazy. You could eat cereal. You could still do your normal kind of thing and eat cereal. And like to me, when you're trying to eat healthy like that, you just need to, I need to check off. So breakfast can be just checked off. You like eat whatever you want. Here's four boxes of cereal, eat whatever you want. And then you can check it off. Cause that's, what's hard when you start having to search. You're like, what am I going to do for lunch? You know, mm-hmm. go to magicspoon.com slash Nate to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code Nate at checkout to get free shipping. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reasons, they will refund your money. No questions asked. That's magicspoon.com slash Nate and use the code Nate for free shipping. We thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring this podcast. Also, we'd like to thank our awesome sponsor, BetterHelp. That's Better H-E-L-P. BetterHelp is the largest online counseling platform worldwide, professional, licensed, and vetted counselors that you can trust. BetterHelp makes professional counseling available anytime, anywhere, through a computer, tablet, or smartphone. BetterHelp, they, it's, they will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. 2020 has been a crazy year for everybody. I'm sure everybody's going through stuff. I know uh, a lot of stuff in 2020 has been depression, anxiety, stress, all that kind of stuff for a lot of people, has been, it's skyrocketed. It's more than they're letting you know that it is. So if if you've experienced 2020 and you're miserable and you're going through a lot of stuff, as we all, like everybody is, and just in your head all the time, uh, it's, you're you're not the only one. And you need, and go get help. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling 
if you, you know, if you don't have to go sit in an uncomfortable waiting room or making time to drive to the counselor. You don't have to sit and listen. You know, I always worry about people hearing you outside the room. You're alone. I want you to start living a happier life today. And as a, as a listener, you will get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash Nate. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Nate. All right, it has been it has been a crazy year. Twenty twenty. Uh, this is it. this is the last episode. Twenty twenty. We did it. We made it through this year. I'd be shocked if we make it through next year. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I uh, we've had a, a, a bit of a week here in Nashville, specifically Nashville. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can start off. Uh, I mean, I don't know which one to start off with. I mean, the lighthearted one, I guess. Uh, our not lighthearted to me is very personal to me, mm. but my mural. So at Zany's, uh, I don't know if it, it, a lot of people in here might not have seen it, but our, uh, if they don't know our, my home club, all of our home clubs in, uh, Nashville, Tennessee is Zany's Zany's comedy club. It's a club we go to a lot. It's where we work. It's where we, you know, is one of the first clubs that headlined me. And I really like kind of came up through, uh, Zany's when I would always come back home. And so, very graciously, they, I, my my face was painted on their wall, with along with, I mean, George Lopez, John Witherspoon, Joe Rogan, Brett. Uh, uh, I almost said Brett Kreischer because they, <laughs> so they always make fun of yeah. Bert Kreischer. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, Chelsea Handler, Chappelle, like a million, you know, a bunch of comics. And so, the, uh, my face was on the wall. Is, it was on a very good, prominent spot. It's a big picture. It was. I mean, this was honestly a gigantic honor. One of the bigger honors I've had in comedy, uh, if not the biggest I've had. Very just felt terrific about it. <laughs> and then a dump truck <laughs> drove through <laughs> only my picture. <laughs> <laughs> only my painting yeah. where's this truck goes it, it it goes to we we've, we've got it up now if you're watching but you can also see it on uh we're posted on again on all the social media stuff it's i mean it's unreal dude <laughs> how much it just hit my <laughs> face i mean you got george lopez right to your left right and he's totally untouched <laughs> totally untouched you would have if we were real people, you would go, is John Witherspoon's okay? And he's like, I'm fine. I got a little scratch on my cheek. <laughs> and he goes, what about, where's Nate? And you're like, oh, Nate's. He didn't make it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, did you check? I don't even have to check. <laughs> he was hit that hard. It, it's over. It doesn't matter. Uh, so we went down I, We went down there and uh, did a little interview on uh, Channel 5, Brian's old stomping grounds. Yeah. Uh, and they they were down there. And I saw we saw it. I got a brick. The brick's here. It's in the room. Oh, hey, get that brick right there. Uh, the we we grabbed. This is my eye. Uh, if you want to see it, this is just the. <laughs> does it look like my eye? I don't know if you can see. Is that looks good? Uh, the guy that painted it. His Instagram is. Uh, one point four point four point zero. Yeah, one point four point four point zero. Yeah, uh, the paintings are unreal, man. Yeah, I mean that's that's what that's the part that hurts is he's so good at what he does. Yeah, that every one of them looks so good, and we're showing some of uh, the stuff. There's Mitch Hedberg up there, Henry Cho, Joey Diaz, Joey Diaz. I've seen some murals at, at different comedy clubs. These are the best that I've that i've seen these are they don't look cartoonish or by far you know by far the best by far the best of any comedy club that uh they are unbelievable the fact when you can say who everybody is yeah the only reason you wouldn't know is because if you just don't know who the person is yeah that's the only reason you wouldn't know who they are there there was me and then (laughs) dude dude, he ran over that (laughs) the potted plants yeah well, they interestingly they put those up because it, this has happened before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, trucks run into the club, uh, or it's just a car hop, car hops the curve and you're in line 
It's going to take people out. Yeah. Oh, good point. Yeah. So they had to they had to barricade it. So what happened was he was there was a dump truck. He's parked up the street, and there's there's porta potties right like across the street from the door of the Zanies on the other side of the street. So the guy the driving the truck wants to go to the bathroom, gets out of the car, starts walking to the bathroom. The truck, it, there's a video of it. I mean, it looks like the truck is like trying to sneak by. Like, just, he's like, shh, 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 shh. yeah. And the guy's like, just walking, has no idea. And it just goes off. I mean, there's, dude, the fact there's no cars right there, there was nothing else right there. And it gets some steam going. And then just, <laughs> right. I mean, dude, he, that, that knocked the barricade down. Yeah. And yeah. then the, I mean, it was, it was on the stage. It was on the stage. Aaron texted me. And I posted this, but he was like, hey, nobody's hurt, but a truck just ran through the wall of Zanies. And I was like, whose mural was it? Please tell me it was Nate's. <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> That's the first, yeah. I said, you're in luck, man. It pretty it, much only hit It his. was only Nate. <laughs> it's like they had it out for him, honestly. It's right in the middle. Yeah. That well, was, uh, we're, we're looking into it to see if uh, Turler was maybe behind the uh, <laughs> dump truck. We don't know for sure. Uh, there's, there's, there's some conspiracies about that, but it's unbelievable that it was like, you know, I mean, it was on the news all day. <laughs> they kept going back live from Zanies. <laughs> it was a very funny thing to be like, we just, at that moment, which is crazy because yeah. then we have everything going on. Yeah. But at that moment, there was just not enough going on. And they're like, let's go back to Zany's. How's that wall coming back? And they're like, well, we're boarding it now. Like, there was just kind of, yep. it's a fun story. It is. It's a fun story. Yeah. Do you feel a little bad for the, out of all the places this guy could have hit? Oh, yeah. He hit a club that it's going to make the news, get celebrities tweeting about it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just felt bad for him. Well, I mean, everybody's, I mean, everybody's going to see how good, you know what? It's funny. It could help him in the fact that, it's uh, it could help him in the fact that people are going to see his work now. I mean, because all this went, and now you're going to. Oh, you're talking about the artist. Oh, yeah. Was, what were you talking about? I was about? talking about the truck. Oh, the jump truck. The I was, I, yeah. I feel bad for well, the artist, I, obviously. For the dump truck as well. He's like, <laughs> what kind of trucks you use? I'll tell you, we use some powerful trucks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the truck looks. It's a Peterbilt. The truck looks great. Yeah. I mean, he just backed out and drove away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He, we're not even sure he knows this yet. <laughs> so we're looking to track him down to let him know, hey, you ruined a building. They asked me to FaceTime him. I go, hey, does this face look familiar? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, he said the guy, the, the guy was kind of like, you know, he's like, he was like kind of laughing it off, but he's like, what, I mean, what are you going to say? You know, what are you going to do? Yeah. It's like, ah. The, one of the crazier pictures of the green room in the green room. Mm -hmm. So the green room is right next to it, and you just see that tire. We were all there the night before performing. Yeah. Yeah, had a great show. Was there, this after night. the Krispy Kreme? No. No, we did that on Monday, and then this happened Tuesday. And the the episode hadn't come out yet, yeah. but it was in between when we recorded Yeah, so it. this is the day after we ate those donuts. Yeah. 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 I think this is the next week. Actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're right, because okay. we, we yeah. saved it for a week. Uh yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So, anyways, they're going to get a new uh, picture. Might change the picture up. Maybe it's bad luck that picture. So, change up to a different one. <laughs> Maybe put a different comic there and then move you to somewhere else. On the wall. Don't take me away, dude. That's that's the best. <laughs> but I'm, you're over on the John Chris side where yeah, nobody sees it. Yeah, that's a hot spot, dude. I'm in a hot commodity. Look, look at all the action we're getting over there. <laughs> Killer bees is right there. I mean, we're all. That is a great wall. Oh, it's the best spot, yeah, or it was for sure. <laughs> that's why it's getting hit. <laughs> right life life comes with risk <laughs> and i wanted to and i'm in the i didn't want they put me in the prime spot on the news <laughs> you said a lot of comics have been canceled in 2020 it's a, <laughs> you didn't know yours was gonna be by the said, dump like, truck. Yeah, well i was like this has gone too far yeah <laughs> uh yeah you know that lady when you said uh the reporting of it and you said, like, she said, like, how was it with Andrew? She's the guy. He just made a lot of jokes. Yeah. And then I came down, and I'm like, and right when I got done, I was like, that was funny, right? Like, that's the only thing I asked Brian. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, you're interviewing a comedy club. Like, you're not going to get a straight answer out of these people. Like, right. And nothing could happen to a comedy club without everybody that gets interviewed is trying to be funny. Yeah, they wanted to make it a serious story about 
2020, now hard it's been, yet another thing. And she interviewed Andrew Dorfman, the owner, and he said, she said, what happened here? He goes, big truck hit wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Andrew, who'd just done his first set there in 20 years the night before. Yeah. Yeah. And then this happens. <laughs> well, we won't let that happen again, Andrew. <laughs> Uh yeah, that dude, that's so funny. He said big truck hit wall. Yeah, he goes big truck hit wall. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that was his answer. <laughs> I mean, that is they go, well, what what did happen? You're like, I mean, that was he nailed it. <laughs> that's what happened. Uh I yeah. grabbed a brick, took it home, it's on my mantle. Oh yeah. Aaron. I got one too. Did you? Yeah. We got my dad. My dad is up there. I mean, grabbing like 10. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Was he really? Uh, yeah, he grabbed a few more. My sister wanted one, and then uh, uh, I think we were going to sign some or something. I don't know. We were doing something like give them away or something if someone wanted one. It's uh, it's kind of fun and funny. It's the most historic building in Nashville t- to me personally. Yeah, I mean, it means more to me than you should check out the Ryman. Than the it means more to me than the Ryman than than the Opry yeah. or any of these other places. It's like everybody. That I ever cared about is yeah, performing in your business, right? It's, it's just to me personally. Yeah, it's definitely definitely means the most. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's I mean, Zanies is uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very special place. Everybody loves Zanies. It's been there forever. Uh, every comic you can imagine, and they have posters of Seinfeld being mm-hmm. there in '82. I mean, it's Jay Leno, like for New Year's Eve before Tonight Show. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, everybody's been there, and it's uh, one of the best clubs in the country. And, you know, the fact that we get to go there as much as we do and kind of get to play around and, you know, Brian Dorfman and Andrew Dorfman, the guys that own it, I'm very close with them and uh, very close with Brian. And then so Brian, I mean, it's just the fact that Brian's the most pro artist, one of the more more pro artist people I've ever dealt with in uh in this business which is a is a thing you know him my lawyer is very ever i mean everybody I, the people that i have bob blah blah the team bob blah 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 <laughs> but the the yeah you know when you get into all this stuff and you have any success you get a, you have a lot of people that are on your team or whatever and so everybody's great everybody's ex, ex, but like dorfman's extremely pro artist uh my lawyer Lev Ginsburg is super. He's <laughs> he's the most pro. Or I mean, dude, he'll I'll lose it on someone if you. Ever, I mean, he's like he's like d- defends me like my mom. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like if you try to say something about me, my mom will destroy. You. <laughs> my mom's not having it. Yeah. You do not talk about our family, and uh, which has always been my mom's always. She always got kicked out of we the baseball games, little league baseball games. <laughs> oh, really? Every game, <laughs> every single game. I mean, it was, and we'd just be sitting there, and uh, they, he would be, "Are you here? Tell me that's a strike." Are you, she's <laughs> right behind. We're in Rotary Park and uh, Hermitage. You tell me to scream that's a tight, and the Trump, and then the ump looks at her, and she has to go watch the rest of the game from the car. <laughs> and so we'd always have to. My dad they would have to park by center field because he knows my mom will eventually end up back in the car, <laughs> so she can then see the rest of the game. Because she was getting. I mean, she went. Would just not even really unpack. Like, do you need a chair? She's like, no, I won't be here long. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to this umpire. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like my lawyer. Uh, so, all right, I'm a little, little crazier. Luckily, not as, uh, like a, as sad of a story as it could have been. Uh, but we also had the uh, explosion on Christmas Day on Second Avenue. Second Avenue. So people that are not from Nashville, Broadway, 2nd Avenue. 2nd Avenue was the street for us growing up. Way more than Broadway. Broadway, I never even... What's funny is I would go downtown, but I would only go to 2nd Avenue. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even go to Broadway. Mm -hmm. Uh, Broadway was all the honky-tonk bars, but you just didn't think to go there. Yeah, it was definitely more gritty then. Yeah. And 2nd Avenue was the street that you would drive up and down. Yeah. And high school and Wild know, Horse Saloon was there. Wild Horse Saloon. I saw I saw a wild horse. I saw a horse get loose on a horse carriage <laughs> there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> it's a wild. <clears throat> this is a picture from that wild horse, and uh, we'll show the bombing in a second. Uh, there's. Uh, it was. I remember I was. We were. I want to say me and Laura. 
we go eat uh, one of the, or something we get a drink at the top of the bar, and you can look down onto Second Avenue, and a horse and buggy was there, and his horse is just losing it, and the guy's on the back just like trying to get it to calm down, and it's just making circles, and then just takes off down the street. And someone's like, stop. People are screaming, stop it. And I remember thinking, <laughs> I mean, it's it's like a car. Yeah. It's a horse. It's, yeah. you know, 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds. This is a great Jason, this comic, Jason Good, that I started with. He had a great joke about how much horses weigh. Like, how much does horse weigh? He's like, 1,000 pounds, 50,000 pounds? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> like, you know, because it is such a, if someone said, how much does one weigh? You're like, I, I don't know, 100,000 pounds, two tons? <laughs> Who knows? I don't know how much any of this stuff is. Uh but it was running down. I remember just the lady being like, stop, someone can help him. And you're like, how? <laughs> it is a wild horse. How can we help this horse? And the guy just back there like, hey, what? <laughs> just trying to get it to calm down. And it just took off and ran into a car. Uh, so. Wow. Uh, all right. Yeah, but that was, you know what? You'd have killed for that time this past Christmas. Just That's that Nashville, time. man. That's what we do. We have horses. Right. I just remember when I was growing up in high school, in Lebanon, if we got to go to the spaghetti factory, oh. <laughs> we thought it was the nicest well, restaurant yeah. in the history of restaurants. So the spaghetti factory, which was destroyed by this bomb, and uh, was it really? Yeah, and it uh, spaghetti. We would go there. As, it was a prom. Mm -hmm. That's the only time I ever went there. That's what's crazy. We talk about eating. I was talking with Shay Mooney. It was his birthday yesterday from Dan and Shay, and Shay will be on this podcast at some point, but. Uh, so we would go eat with him and his wife and his sisters, and they're all from, Shay's from small town, Arkansas. He's 500 people from his town. His wife is from a small town, 190 people. That's unbelievable. Yeah. She's talking about going, she was like, when I was growing up, like Chili's was crazy. Yeah. Like it was like, if they went to Chili's, it's like, I mean, you, you're, it, it's, it's like going to the French laundry place. They make fun of Newsom that went to, but like it would be in your head, that's the equivalent. Oh, yeah. You couldn't even wrap your head around it. Uh, an LA place. And uh so like yeah, like chain stuff. Yeah, I remember Spaghetti Factory. I think we'd go there as a prom and you're I mean, it's like I don't even you know, if the bill was eighty dollars, you're like, I mean, I don't I can't afford right. you I didn't even break money when you were on a prom. Yeah. We've already I didn't covered have, that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even have enough money to go to cooker. <laughs> uh you ever but, heard of the cooker? No, what is that? That I mean, was, a big, that was like a big, that was a big. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, the cooker yeah. was where it was at. The cook, the cooker <laughs> was a nice. It was a step up. It's like a, a step up from Outback. Yeah. So like yeah, which Outback was a is a pretty big, you know. <laughs> oh Charlie, those places are great. They're great. You know? I know. Yeah. We look, we're yeah, we're all fans of this. I, I know we're on the, the same chain. page. Yeah, we're on the same. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, but uh. Going to Spaghetti Factory, yeah, I remember, yeah, it was, it's nuts. It was a very fancy, and I don't even, you know, now is it even still considered that, or? I think There's so many awesome I, restaurants now in I Nashville. I had my company Christmas dinner there once. Yeah. A few years ago. I yeah. loved it. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. great. So that, uh, yeah, so that happened on Christmas Day. I mean, it was crazy. So Brian, you, you uh, has had a place right next to Titan Stadium. Yep, close yeah. to it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The guy I know still lives there, and I immediately texted him, and he said he was actually up already that morning, felt it, sh heard it, obviously, shook the building pretty bad, but and then he saw the smoke. And you have some damage on your... the Not his unit specifically, but the building itself has some structural damage, and it's about a mile away from the blast site. That's how big that bomb was. Wow. That's it's like so Krakatoa. Crazy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you could hear it a long close. way. You could hear it a long way. Uh, I mean, I knew people in uh, Mount Juliet, Wilson County, which is 25 miles away, and they and they heard it, yeah, or felt it, felt a shake. Not heard it, but felt a shake. My mom's friend said she heard it in Mount Juliet. My mom told me this yeah. Christmas Day, and I ridiculed her friend. I'm like, Mom, that is the crazy. Like, there was yeah. no way I thought that <laughs> yeah. was true. Yeah, I owe her a big it apology. Sound, I would have, I would have reacted the same. I still yeah. question whether she like, heard it, but nah. well, I've heard of um, Michael Clay. Who listens to the podcast? Yeah, uh, Michael Clay and uh, his daughter Moxie, who also is a big fan of the podcast, and uh, they they felt it, and they live out, they live in Lebanon. They felt it, or wow. or felt, heard it, or felt mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Well, our buddy Tanner Newcomb, who's a comic here in Nashville, he works right down there. He works the graveyard graveyard shift at a hotel. He was down there when it happened. Oh, really? Yeah. On Second Avenue? Yeah. He said it. it 
hurt his hearing. It was so loud. Yeah. He's got it back. He's fine, but could he hear the did he was he close enough to hear the warnings? I think he I haven't talked to him yet in person. We texted a little bit. I think they told him to evacuate before. Yeah. They were going around telling people to evacuate. Yeah. So he was right right in the thick of it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be crazy, dude. Mm. It was yeah. such a, it's, it's you know, look, thankfully no one was down there. There's all this warning. I mean, there, that also adds into just everybody's, what they think happened. I mean, now they caught the guy and they think he just didn't like 5G, uh, which doesn't work. Uh, well, they didn't catch him. They think he's. 5G. Uh, yeah, I haven't called it either. You that. <laughs> he was just uh, mad that it didn't work that well. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it doesn't work. It's just funny <laughs> that it's you're against 5G. No, supposedly this guy that did it, that died in it. Yeah. I thought know. you said they caught him. No, I don't know. They didn't. Yeah. Uh, they didn't, but they didn't. He doesn't like five. Like they think 5G, if they think people, you know, which who knows if people think that or not. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying 5G doesn't work. My phone is. The 5G phone, and I, I take it somewhere, it just shuts <laughs> off. So, I mean, that's what's crazy. All the phone, that's the craziest thing, though, to me, is 911 was just shut down. I was hearing to Knoxville, <laughs> Tennessee, but I mean, all Middle Tennessee could call 911. We didn't, if you had ATT, whatever ATT you had did not work. See, whether it's your cell phone, internet, like we didn't have internet, we have Verizon cell phone. That's what I learned. You need to mix up the companies. Can't put all your eggs in one basket. Can't man. put all your eggs. In. My neighbors just left. They went to. Uh, <laughs> they did New it. Jersey. Dwayne, Diane, where you parked your car in their driveway. <laughs> uh, the Myers. They went to no New Jersey. They they did go to New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, their family. They're from there. So they just they were thinking about like should we go drive up to Jersey? They were driving, and, uh, and then they just were like they couldn't. I mean. They, they're nothing. No phones. No, you know. Wow. You got to just sit with your family, learn a lot of stuff. <laughs> so yeah, it ended up being a uh, a wild week, and you know, and thankfully everybody's fine uh, as far as you know the, and the people that live down there. Yeah, all that stuff is super damaged, and uh, yeah, I and mean, the bomb is so crazy, such a big bomb. That's the yeah. How do they not catch that guy up to that point? Mm. But we can head down those roads, those conspiracy <laughs> roads. He was playing downtown, the song downtown by playing this, Petula yeah. Clark. Sun downtown. I don't know the song. Uh, downtown. That's all I'm singing I'm going to do. Now do you know it? Now you know it? Oh, that? Oh, yeah. Downtown. Oh. <laughs> I'm going downtown. <laughs> That's the song. Where are you going downtown? We're hurrying. I'm downtown. going downtown. I'm making up and words earlier round. Sugar, we're going. Did, Did you, you know it? No, it's a different. Song. I thought you would know it, but yeah. last week you guys didn't know "Roll Out the Barrel." I mean, <laughs> roll out the yeah. barrel. Roll out the barrel. Yeah, from the yeah. 1840s. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know your dad listened to that music, but <laughs> see that joke? That joke was. I'm not calling him that old, but his dad's that old, so that means he's that old. See, that's how comedy works, Aaron. Do you get it now? <laughs> Saint Nick. Uh, there's, uh, yeah. I yeah, I know downtown. I know. You, you would know the, the song. Okay. Play the downtown song. Can I play it? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's totally going to get flagged. Mm. You can't play it. 15 seconds. Oh, you can play 15 seconds of it. That's oh, enough. That's enough for me to, to yeah. recognize it? Pat Patula, Patula Clark. She sounds like someone that's going to read a, send a comment in. <laughs> I mean, that sounds exactly like It does thing. sound like a folk, for sure. You probably got to go a little bit farther ahead. Uh, I don't know if you should have started. You go ahead and I'm going to get to the Are we wasting our 15 seconds? <laughs> yeah. Living downtown. Okay, yeah. I know that one. Downtown. Yeah. Okay. All right. Kaboom right after that. That was, <laughs> yeah. He played that in the warning. Uh, that is that yeah. is evil. I don't know why they sing that. Yeah, that is evil. Why would you have to play the song downtown? And then, you know, you are downtown. He's not a fan of downtown, clearly. And yeah. He's trying he, to send a message. Yeah, he didn't like, you know, was, look, traffic's tough, dude. That's how <laughs> I would talk to him before he did it. Look, if I tried to talk him out of it, and yeah. you're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow it up, man. I can't handle it. I'd be like, hey, man, look. Yeah, it's getting crazy, dude. <laughs> I don't like it down here. I either, agree, dude. dude. Traffic <laughs> is crazy. Have you been to the spaghetti factory? Like, like, <laughs> same what it what used to be. 
I get it. <laughs> but I don't think we need to, you don't want to do something like that. You know what I mean? He's like, I'll do it. I'm going to do it. I'll play the downtown song. Like, no one even knows that song. Anymore, <laughs> no one even knows mm. that song. There's no reason to do something like that. Mm. I'll give a warning, too. I know, what are we talking about? Mm. And then there was another one in Lebanon, Tennessee. Yeah, that one I'm not sure about. Wait, yeah. uh, it was in between Lebanon and Murfreesboro, the community of Walter Hill. Rutherford County. Yeah, it was it was a it was a, a van like a a box like truck a Fed, like said. a FedEx. It look it's not FedEx, but it looks like a FedEx truck. Yeah, it was a box truck that I guess they said was playing the same song. Yeah, and I mean, do you think that happens where someone just hears that and they go, "Yeah, I heard that song in a while," yeah. and then he starts. And he, I mean, it happens. Yeah. That's like when Journey after the Sopranos, "Don't Stop Believing" became number one on yep. iTunes. Everybody was like, "Oh." Well, there's still going to be people that see this. It's a, you know, it's a weird look. I mean, we make jokes about all this, but it's actually the only bombing like you could actually make jokes about because I mean, he died and he clearly wanted to, and no one else did. And so the you know, I mean, besides the you're a little scared, a little nervous. Besides that, uh, yeah, I mean, people are making you know, it's like uh, making jokes about it, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys bailed on me, man. <laughs> and whatever helps you sleep at night, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking this seriously. I don't know. Well, I didn't, you know. Down well, right when it down. happened, I got a text from Aaron and said, finally. And I didn't even know. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't even know what it meant. You know, it took me a few hours before I realized what it was. I got one of them that said, mission complete. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what this is about, yeah. but I guess Nate's mural got hit again. Have y'all gone through Aaron's uh, Amazon? <laughs> he ordered some weird stuff. Doesn't none of it makes sense until it makes sense? You know what I mean? Like all the all the parts. You're like, what is this even going to do? And he just said, "You will see." <laughs> he got bumped from open mic by Tanner Newcomb. He was like, "I'll show him." I'll show him. <laughs> uh, oh, this feels fun. good. Well, yeah. like Seinfeld, like all of us back together. Yeah. It feels- Ugh. Hello. <laughs> uh, so this episode of 2020 is coming to an end. Uh, and so we, you know, here, we just talked about something that bad happened in 2020. Look, we know uh, everything on 2020 now, if someone talks about it, 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 it was not a good year. It was not a good year at all. And we all went through hard times. And, our, and a lot of people went through way more hard times than I did everybody's hard times are their own personal hard times. Some people go through them worse than others. And uh, I feel nothing but sympathy for everybody that, you know, the actual person that has to struggle through stuff. That's who I feel sympathy for. Not the grand scheme, you know, but it's like, yes, if you're listening to this, you and you and you, I feel bad if you had to go through something and you had to deal with more. Uh, But we did not want to just talk about negative stuff in 2020. Uh, so we, with the idea of this episode will be to tell you why this is still the greatest time to be alive right now, just to give you some look and, and I don't think any of our listeners will, uh, take this the wrong way. Cause I think everybody's level, logical, level headed people and they don't, <clears throat> if someone finds this somewhere else, they might, uh, not again, not saying bad stuff happens, but how about some positive it's you're still currently, and I'm not saying he like someone's gonna, <clears throat> someone falls out of a building. That guy, it wasn't the best time for him to be alive. Mm-hmm. But in general, broad strokes, right. by far, never a better time to be alive. Right than right now. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I did some <clears throat> research on it. If you just look year to year, you could certainly argue some years are worse than others. <laughs> 2020 yeah. was definitely a worse year. Yeah, in and, 2019. Yeah, and for many, many metrics. So broad strokes, though, we are talking decades and sometimes centuries, undoubtedly the world is going to be a much better place yeah. in most of the areas that we consider. And I don't think people think about that. I know that, you know, I feel like if you tell someone this, they're like, yeah, of course. And you're like, I know, but tell yourself that, man. Be in it. Remind yourself. You know what? It is. And I should be, at least be happy for a second. Mm-hmm. Don't just be miserable. Don't just, you know, it's like trying to, you can throw yourself your pity parties. I get it. But also when you walk around, just try to be like, all right, you know what? This is a good time. And if I'm down on my luck, this is the best time to try to turn that around. You have the most opportunity to turn this around. So let's, you know, let's enjoy 2020. It's the best year I've ever had. So from what I read. No, I'm not saying. (laughs) Just turn around. 
You know what, guys? It's amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's companies that are through the roof right now, 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Amazon, if you're Jeff Bezos, <laughs> that guy is like, I mean, he won't have a better year. <laughs> 2020, honestly, might be his best year ever. So we have him on the podcast. He's <laughs> he's going to be, he'll be the only thumbs up on this podcast is one Jeff Bezos. He's like, these guys, what these guys get it, dude. <laughs> they get it. He's a zillionaire. Um, I was reading about this. Some stuff surprised me. Most people would say the world's getting a, be worse, a wor- worse place to live yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. And as there, as if there's another place to live in. That's what <laughs> the world's the worst place to live in. You're like, where else? Where do you, where do you want to go? Yeah, outside of that, kind of our only option right yeah, now. This is it. Look, Mars. Obviously, we might yep, already have people on the table. Yeah. We do have people on there. You don't believe it? I believe it. We haven't. Even, no, is that podcast? No, that's well. One. We talked about it a couple Somewhere weeks else. ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have we have uh, one that we have. Yeah, all right. Sorry. Uh, uh, the the prevailing thought is. It, the world's getting a much better place, but we have so much more access now to media, social media, TV media, all of it, yeah. that we know so much more about the bad stuff happening. It's not that it's worse. It's actually getting much better, but we just hear about the bad stuff so much more. We're more educated about yeah. it. I'm rethinking this whole episode now. Uh, it's actually the worst. That's what we're gonna <laughs> do. Uh, now, that is true. That the yeah, media, 24-hour media, 24-hour news, and social media. I Yeah. You got rid of social media, we'd go back to living an amazing life. Uh, you wouldn't get stuff out, though. I mean, you know, I say that. That's probably not true. But it's uh, – yeah, that's that's very much true. But it's, it still doesn't mean that it's you, you'd rather live now than you want to live in 1900. No, 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 no. No, of course. I th- what? Now is much better. Yes, it's just that we hear about the bad stuff much easier. Yeah. So, but it doesn't make it to. worse. No, he's no, just, just saying there's a perception. Yeah. It because gives you a perception because you hear all about it now. You're right? able to hear about everything. Yeah, you're not going to get a newspaper from Syracuse, New York, in 1900 and find out somebody got murdered there, right? But then they, now you see it all over Twitter. And right. Everything. Yeah, but then, but that doesn't just because you hear about it doesn't mean that it's worse. No, I'm saying it. it cre- he's saying it creates a false yes. perception. So that, it's fake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're all talking. I about the think. Same yeah, thing. I think we're. Was that a flip side? <laughs> Would that have been a proper flip side or germ, germane? Could you have used those any of in any, any of that? Oh man, I'm just. I'm glad we're back on the same page because I felt we got lost there for a second. Yeah. On the Gregorian calendar, <laughs> do you think 2020 was worse as a secular year? That's not like other years. It's a what do you think? I don't know, man. Um, all right, here's some numbers that look. I have no idea if these are true or not, <laughs> but I'm going to read them because they sound good. Yeah. <laughs> um, every day, the number of people around the world living in extreme poverty, which is recognized as less than two dollars a day, goes down by 217 thousand people every day. That happens. That's that's awesome. This is according to those guys. By the way, extreme. I mean. <sighs> Extreme poverty is doing better than what we're doing on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> we're still at zero. <laughs> Nine out of ten. This of- podcast is an extreme poverty yeah, right now. <laughs> we're below extreme. We would look at those people and go, God, what's that like? How much, there? Yeah, that must be nice to be up there. How many you get $2 a day? Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Nine out of ten Americans polled said that global poverty is worsening. But instead, over the last 40 years, the world has seen the greatest poverty reduction in human history. In 1981, 42% of the world lived on less than $1.90 a day. Um, now it's less than 10% to do that. See, that's that's the – so like if you polled everybody, if these polls – again, we've made fun of polls, and who knows if those are even – Sure. Right. Yeah. But just to, so we can have a conversation, <laughs> uh, we got to make up something. Yeah. We, these polls are just – we asked uh, – just my family, immediate family. <laughs> and uh, uh, they, <laughs> that would be funny every poll. If all the polls were fake and we found out it's all just, well, who'd you ask? He goes, just around the holidays, <laughs> I just asked my aunts and uncles and cousins. You like, see, this is just your family. It's like, yeah, it's a good, it's a general. They're pretty middle, they're, they live in the, they live in the Minnesota. And so they're probably the rest of the country. And you're like, all right. Uh, but that, that example is good as everybody thinks it's worse. But that that is why this is why I like this topic. Mm-hmm. 
as an episode because it's just to go like, no, man, it's getting better. There's no, that's, we have, uh, positive, being positive is everybody just puts like negative. Everybody, I try to live by a way that I assume everybody I'm about to meet, if I meet someone, I assume they're probably smarter than me, which is most everybody. Statistics show that's true. Yeah. We did a poll on mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's 100% accurate. 100%. <laughs> God, 10 out of 10. Can you believe that? Uh, <laughs> So I, you, you need to meet someone and you go like, I'm assuming they're smarter than me and they're a nice person. Because generally, your percentage of meeting just a maniac that's going to punch you in the face from nowhere are unbelievably low. Unbelievably low. So just maybe assume everybody's smart. And people need to, you need to enter in that space. Like when you go into something, go into it with a better or Even attitude. the dumb ones, they're going to know, they know something you don't. I've heard mm. that said before. Assume the other person in the conversation knows something you don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is almost always true, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's a good Yeah, we, I mean, we talked about like just, you know, oh, like just, yeah, be open, listen. You know, look, the bombing stuff, I was saying this downstairs, like there's a lot of conspiracies about what happened this bombing. And, uh, and I, you know, and it made me think when I was like reading them, I was like, I do think you need some conspiracy in your life. <laughs> You need some whatever regular news, but it, I don't think it's bad. That, like you need someone to be like, I don't even think you know, there's those buildings are real buildings downtown, you know, or something. You need something to go like, all right, well that guy. You just need a balance to like kind of go like, I don't want to just get jammed this one thought. Everybody's saying this one thing. I do like to hear from one other person to be like, let me just figure it out on my own, you know. Yeah, but by the time this podcast comes out in a couple of days, it could be a whole new theory on that. Whole, I mean, yeah. I mean, whole new theory, you know? Yeah, exactly. According to the World Bank, which sounds made up, the World Bank, <laughs> but around... The human fund. <laughs> <laughs> money for people. <laughs> money for people. <laughs> That's what this sounds like. I got you guys a gift card to the World Bank. <laughs> That's where you guys' money is at for this podcast. I deposited it straight into the World Bank account. You I don't have that hooked up yet? I didn't even know I had one. Yeah, um, dude. Y'all got so much money in there. <laughs> I can't believe it. The number is 555-555-555. Well, according to the World Bank, around 88 million people were thrown back into extreme poverty this year because of the pandemic, which is terrible. But it only takes us back. It doesn't set us back to the dark ages. It goes back to 2017, the rate. And the way the world's improving, we'll be right back to the best poverty rate in history by 2023. Boom. So it's a, it's a slight setback. Yeah. I mean, look, if you're one of those 88 million people and you're listening to this podcast, you are not happy right now. <laughs> I can tell you right now, they, they are not thrilled. But I get like it. We're this everything got to be kind of talked in broad strokes, right? You can't indiv- individualize everything, or we're never going to get anywhere. So it's, everything's got to be kind of talked in these broad things. So in general, yeah, everything's good. We all have I have friends that or it's getting better. Laid off, yeah, and then uh, some are getting jobs. Uh, Brother in law just he get he's going to get a new job. He was laid off. I think he's getting a new job. So yeah, things are getting better. I mean, kind of along those lines, food supply. In 1961, food supply in 54 out of 183 countries was less than needed. Um, But now that's only true in two countries. So world famine has greatly been reduced. We're getting fatter. (laughs) Well, we are. (laughs) We're getting fatter. We, during the pandemic, ate a lot of donuts that weren't needed to be eaten. We thrive. Life expectancy has greatly increased, but in the United States, because of what you just said, we've slightly ticked down, but we're one of the few countries. That have gone down? Slightly, yeah. Because we're, we're eating Krispy Kreme Challenge? Yeah. Uh, Most countries are going way up. Yeah. This podcast alone <laughs> changed the numbers. Yeah. We Imagine like in average. like 700, if some, if say 700 uh, AD, was it, or something, uh, are we in AD now? Or we're, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, 780. I know y'all look at me like I say something wrong, man. And then I question the fact that you even say, say it makes us look at you. 700 weird. pound guy. Then he goes, 700 no, AD. Like the, I'm saying the life expectancy there in 700 is probably 40 or 35, oh, yeah. like yeah, yeah. 20, you know. Right. In 1900, the world average was 31. 1900? So even then, 
And it's not so much that because everyone was dying at that age, so many people died early, like as a child, that it set the average down. If you got to a certain age, you can live to be 50 or 60. Yeah. But so many people died in child childhood that it yeah. put the averages way Just down. babies were not making it because it was, yeah, you're born, you know, they have, you know, 1900. You think anything about 1900? I'm like, what they? Yeah, you had to be born in a tent in the right. They didn't have, you know. And you're like, no, do they had buildings, man? You're like, did they? I said, like, that's what. That's that's what's going to end up being. What if you say 1900? Yeah, that's what everybody's going to think. You like my daughter, but when she's old enough to leave, she's like 1900. It's like, well, you guys, like, why? Because dinosaurs ate them. That's what you're thinking. Yeah. Like, why they live? Because dinosaurs are snatching them up. You're like, yeah. Part of the reason, that's what I'm going to say to her, <laughs> is I'm going to go, yeah, that was a gigantic factor. The T-Rexes were obviously gone, but the <laughs> raptors, we couldn't find them. <laughs> and they sneak up on you, and they want you to go. Uh, in the year 1800, so 220 years ago, 43% of the world's children didn't make it past the age of five. Wow. It's so almost half. I'm, almost half of the world's children? Good night. Now, How do you it, even get that stat? Do you think they pulled everybody? <laughs> How did they get that stat? That's the best guess. They I probably guess. kept. I mean, eighteen hundred. They were probably keeping records at that point, right? I guess. I'm I think sure they just s- clapped a lot <laughs> for. They clapped at each other, like the Bargatze family does. <laughs> That's how we do it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to. Uh, the race now down to near to lighten the mood. <laughs> Baby genocide over here. <laughs> That's the name they should call him. Baby genocide over here. Gonna... Yeah, I went to uh, we went to Jefferson Davis's house as a field trip. He's a comic. growing up. <laughs> Jeff- oh, yeah. Oh, the Jefferson. Davis. I thought it was a comic. <laughs> local comic. Uh, He's very funny. Yeah. These are the kind of field trips we're taking in Montgomery, Alabama. We go to the first White House of the Confederacy. Yeah. And you're just in his family's home, and they're like, "Oh yeah, his daughter died right there. She uh, fell off the steps." Yeah. His oh. son died over there. He had like 12 kids and yeah. eight of them died. And you're just like, wow, yeah. this guy, what That's, a sad yeah. life this guy has. Yeah. But, but that was then, just normal. It was just like, yeah, oh, half your kids die. It's, half like, of it's, them, like, it's like cats with a litter. It's like some of them are going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, baby alligators, I think, don't make it. Like a baby turtle. Their yeah. percentage is tiny. Yeah. I think, look up a baby turtle <laughs> percentage of making it. If it, when it, when a turtle's born, the odds that the the mom leaves them, and then they got to get to the ocean on their own, and it's wow. it, and and it's it's a tiny yeah one uh, in ten thousand survive to adulthood estimate yeah I mean yeah pretty wild I didn't know that huh that's I, what see you learned something right before the year wrapped up you I love the turtles you, had it easy yeah. easy living. <laughs> You're the, the, the how did you? Know? I love that you knew nothing about childhood mortality rates, but turtles, you're all over it. What did you, you before you read that, you knew that 1800s only 50% of kids made it? I did not know that, but okay. I also didn't know about turtles. Was, I, I didn't know the baby one, but I knew turtles. I know turtles, I mean, they don't, they don't even have a fighting chance. I think if you're born as a turtle, it's if you open your eyes and you're like, oh, I'm a turtle, dead coming, <laughs> and then you're like, like I mean, you just have no, ch- like that's that's what I picture. Just don't open your eyes, and just when you right when you open your eyes, just be like, please don't see weird hands. <laughs> and then you're like, and then you'd oh. ask the people around you, do I have a show on me, dude? Don't say it. Don't say it. I have a show. On. And he's like, yeah, you have you have a show on you. Like, We're not making it. One of us is making it. He's like, dude, there's 10,000 of us. And he goes, one of us. <laughs> one of us. He goes, how's that impossible? The water's right there. I mean, you see it. It's not like they go across the Appalachian Mountains. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like you can throw a football the distance they got to go, and they get wiped out, dude. They just get, they can't do it. It says, by seabirds and fish. Wow, that's a tough life. Um... Anyway, <laughs> just open your eyes. Oh crap! I'm a turtle. <laughs> That's the oh, least dude. one. I mean, if you're a, you know a baby lion, you're like, all right. And oh, they yeah. they have a what are animals? Just in general, what are animals? Babies? Just, What's the, were they higher than the 1800 just, humans? Just all animals? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, just in general, do how many animal like, what's babies? The best? I would say an elephant baby maybe has the best chance. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh, oh. like a you know. I'm so glad you have the laptop now. The, yeah, deer. I mean, thankfully they broke it down by different types of animals. I don't think there's yeah. just a generic. <laughs> that's life all animal. Life that's what we're looking for, right? No, no. I was looking at like <laughs> oh, uh, like we're looking for life. Yeah, expect an Amazon parrot. Eighty years. That's isn't that a big thing that people buy parrots and then they die. The the owner will die before the parrot. Well, maybe. Because you but you buy a parrot, you know, you're not buying a parrot at 10 years old. You buy a parrot when you're 40. <laughs> yeah. And everybody's gone out of your house. And then you uh then that parrot lives to 80. And well, then we just got a puppy yesterday and it's life expectancy is 20 years. And I was like, <laughs> this dog's looking at me like, oh my god, dude. Yeah. You gotta take care of yourself. I think the dog, I know, I think the dog's getting closer to Ruth just because it knows. <laughs> That you, you know, you're not going to be there maybe physically, but definitely not mentally here for the whole run. She was looking at me like, at least show me where the food is. Yeah. Just, just show me. Do you know where the food's at? Yeah. Let me show you where the yeah, food's Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the, I want to see. The, these are the 15 animals with the <laughs> lowest chances of survival. I've never heard of any of these animals, which I guess makes sense. That makes sense. Because they're all dying. Uh, survival of the frogs are in zoos. They're not even making it out of zoos. Oh, man. They so, just weren't meant to live, I guess. I mean, could you? how do you not survive in a zoo? That's where we're helping you. And they can't help themselves. Yeah. Well, the mouth. They should call better help is what they should call better. H e l p dot com slash name. And they should talk to somebody to go. What? What do you think it is, man? Why can't you? It's 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 thirty yards. You got to get. What's the? Is there the the lower low chances are raised due to at least two of the following factors? Uh. Polit- it's political, of course. Political instability in the site. Of course. <laughs> Politics are in everything. You can't just get away from it. <laughs> oh, so this is interesting. So the the opportunity of establishing an insurance population. I don't, okay. I thought I knew what that sentence meant. It zoos for these 15 <laughs> species is low due to high cost or lack of breeding. I said they can't get insurance for the animals because their survival rate is so low. So they don't have a lot of these in zoos. Yeah, once it, it, it so it's uh, is that, am it, I reading that right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You don't think I'm reading that right? I checked out. I didn't even listen to you. I didn't. This is the first time. I don't think this I is insurance the way we think of insurance. To be honest. Yeah. Uh, I thought you left early. Uh, oh, hey, Aaron. Uh, I, so mammals. <laughs> Mammals, a uh, mouse, a rat, and a gopher. Those, those, those are not doing good. They have a hard time. Uh, the birds, I don't know any of them. The climbing rat. The uh, Amsterdam albatross. You should say they're 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 much more specific types of. It's mouse. mouse it's not just all mice and then rats. <laughs> I know, but I'm. So you think someone's going? What kind of mouse? And I go the Mount Lefo brush furred <laughs> mouse. And they go, all right, well, thank you, because I definitely know. Yeah, that mouse has a lot harder time. You think there's someone at home listening to this going like, well, that makes a lot more what? sense because it's not a typical house mouse that has got his life together and is born into a nice family. If it's a Mount Lefo brush furred mouse, do you know where those people come from? Those mice are just struggling, dude. A uh, champagne climbing rat, shy pan. <laughs> Is it shy pan? I don't know. It's, it's not champagne. It's, it's not champagne. I know that much. A champagne climbing rat. <laughs> Their life might sound luxurious, but they ain't making it out, dude. It sounds good. It's all a facade. That's a big word. Uh, tropical pocket gopher. And obviously, you can tell why they're not making it. The pocket is literal. They're in pockets. People keep them. Tropical pocket gopher. Is there other animals? What's uh, amphibians, amphibians up there? Go look and like mostly what's, frogs. Is there better numbers? Something with pictures. That's very no some numbers. I don't. I don't. Uh, I just want to see like some numbers that say. So, uh, yeah. Is it you know like the one in ten thousand sea turtle that you can't that you can't make it? I feel like you're Michael Scott. He's Pam. Pam, look up how long animals survive. Yeah. <laughs> she just makes yeah. up some numbers to tell him. Oh. Yeah, he could do that. He could make stuff up. It's the. This is, yeah. I mean, why does everybody got to write a paper about everything? You know, you click on a 
Dagum. Now when you see what I go through research I mean, of this stuff. Good night, dude. Just someone just throw out a number. <laughs> they just everything's like, all right, let me, I dove into this shit. Well, I don't. Good night, dude. I, I just try to look up some quick facts look at in the, every website. You click on, like, Here's a forty page. Get out of here, dude. And charts are ridiculous, by the way. I've learned I've learned that during COVID. I don't understand a chart. None of it really makes sense to me. I don't know what the numbers on the side or the bottom really are, and they none of them make sense. And they need. I, I'm tired of hearing like, well, out of one every ten thousand, and everybody's like, well, that's high. Here's a, here's a good crap. Uh, <laughs> So, I mean, I have no what idea. is this graph? I have no idea what it means. <laughs> this is this is doesn't even make sense, dude. I we got a graph problem in this country. And these people that make these graphs and they're you know they're so I feel like there's a graph community that's so into it that they like a graph person's like, dude, that graph is so perfect. And and to a person that's like, I don't ever graphs are just not in my life. I don't really use them a lot. And so you need to calm it down a little bit. Because the last time I saw a graph was in elementary school. <laughs> I said, you can't be throwing all this nonsense out at me. I sent Aaron a bunch of graphs for today's show that I thought might be helpful. We have a bunch on here. Yeah. I got them pulled up. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying he, he just says he didn't like the, them. These are that's, very intuitive. They're, yeah, they're that's nice a looking. Good they're organized. That's a normal graph. Okay. So that shows yeah. what the life expectancy was in 1770. Was 30. Was like 28, probably. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Depending on which country you lived in, yeah. it was around twenty eight to thirty five. Yeah, and now in most developed countries, it's anywhere from sixty to up to eighty in Europe, sixty so the, in Africa. The graph across time, we kind of just stay at the same average till a little at the nineteen twenties or so. What till the you, Roswell crash? Is that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was going to ask what what that. happened there that everything started trending. Upwards. Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> When was Walmart made? <laughs> <laughs> when was Walmart? I think it was later in the 1920s. I don't know, Aaron. That's a good question. Do you remember going to your first? Do you remember when they're being put up? 1962, <laughs> Walmart founded that late. Uh, I mean, that's a good question. I don't, a lot I don't know the answer to yeah. that, but I think a lot of vaccines happened. I think they cured polio. Yeah, smallpox. Which last week you said instead of making the world's smallest Christmas card, this guy should be working on smallpox. But yeah. So, so I guess he's ti- he's <laughs> he like did well, it. I, so he's like I'm retired. <laughs> he's good. <laughs> but life expectancy, as you see, has went way up uh, since the 1920s. Yeah. So uh, good for you guys. A woman in South. No, that's just one. I guess anybody in South. No, it is a woman. I'm sorry. <laughs> Average woman in South Korea by the year 2030 will live to see her 90th birthday. Wow. What's their hip size over there? Is that the hip? That's, they're not hip. They don't care about hip size, right? I don't know. In Africa, the life expectancy has went up 10 years just in the last decade. That's And where? In oh, Africa. Yeah. Yeah, Africa is making – well, they're making big strides because I feel like they are – like they, they just have a lot more places that are way – like old time and then so now they're gonna get yeah water is becoming better for them my brother does a lot of stuff god international yeah i was gonna say i got a lot of missionaries in yeah. my church show a lot of powerpoints that i got a question now yeah i'm giving them money for something fixing water fixing water yep they're beginning but my brother we, we gave uh someone we like uh they raised money uh we did one the Giving Thursday. They raised money. It's like I think it was some lady had to walk forever to get water. Mm. Like it's insane mm-hmm. how far these guys have to go to get water. And so we they're able to build her something to have water, mm-hmm. clean drinking water. Her life expectancy sh- shot up that day. Cancer, which you've talked about in a previous episode, why aren't they Should doing be anything? Solved. Uh, they are making progress. The in the United States, the cancer death rate fell by twenty five percent from nineteen ninety to twenty fourteen. Saving the lives of 2.1 million people. That's a pretty big chunk. Yeah. Yep. 25% is a lot. But it's, you know, let's get on it. Let's. So they're making strides. Let's get on. We got a lot of doctors listening to this. Mm-hmm. Mike Wilson. What's his, what was his name? Uh, yeah, I think that doctor. was it. Was it's it Safdar Khan, too. Yeah. Dr. Mike Wilson and. Dr. Khan. Dr. Khan. How about you guys team up, <laughs> cure cancer, cancer, and call it Penguin. This will be a vaccine. Everybody's <laughs> got to go. I'm here for the penguin. 
Uh, speaking of vaccines, what's a ping? Wait, what's a ping, <laughs> penguin? What's a penguin's life expectancy? Do uh, Great question. in Antarctica and also in Alabama? Do both? <laughs> uh, Arkansas is where the yeah, that's what Arkansas. Ar- where yeah. It. See, do life expectancy fifteen to twenty years? That's not it? bad. Some live considerably longer. So I, I thought they can live. Longer so I guess that than means that. nothing. How do they die? Let's see that heart attack. <laughs> wow, it's all the blubber. Uh, <laughs> How do most penguins the, yeah. die? If they die on the sea ice, their bodies fall in the sea <laughs> when said ice breaks up in the spring. They get eaten by scavengers like skuas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I feel like you're getting emotional during that. <laughs> They're <right>? birds. <laughs> I'm just laughing, man. A skua's a bird. So oh, they get eaten by bird. other birds. Yeah. How long do skuas live? They're like, oh, they live forever. Like, well, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, so the bird, skua doesn't kill the penguin. It just eats it when it's dead? Yeah, they can wait because, I mean, they're dying left and right. You know, they walk, they just wobble around <laughs> and they don't get anywhere to go. You know, can't hide. They're in Antarctica. Uh, you should go to Arkansas. And guess what? They would be like, have you ever been killed by a skua? They'd be like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> been run over by a truck, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh vaccinations 86 percent of all one-year-olds in the world now have been vaccinated against diphtheria tetanus and whooping cough mm. i think i had whooping cough as a kid it's uh those three are big killers i think around the world i think i did this is a good chance whooping cough hasn't been around since uh the 1820s so it could have been something else but uh oh yeah, well you just went this. back to no. yeah <laughs> That's the child mortality rate and how it's it's night. dropped I mean, drastically. Are we still talking about babies dying? All right. So <laughs> look how much better things are, though. Yeah, they are. Is this all? What is your research on? Just, <laughs> I mean, you're like, what are we going to call this t- this episode? I don't know. Baby death, I guess. <laughs> like, good. That's, that, that covers most of it. <laughs> uh, fertility rates have fallen. Had to look at what that meant. I mean, but- we're still on it. <laughs> we're still talking about maybe the, technically this is a good one though people were having way too many children um in countries where they're overpopulated and couldn't have to feed them but um now fertility rates among women are way down in these development <laughs> what <laughs> what's going on over here yeah, i don't know dude he doesn't something got him going <laughs> it was, something got him going with him <laughs> All, I'm trying to think what you said that would have made him laugh. You said people are having too many babies <laughs> in countries where they couldn't Sorry. feed them. Sorry. Keep going. Did that make you laugh? Just, just the, whole, the whole situation. Yeah, the whole situation that we keep. <laughs> Probably yeah. being like, yeah, people are having too many kids. Thankfully, they're having less kids now. And just they just look at so annoyed. Yeah. Well, the I mean, whole thing was funny. We Sorry. I've asked to get off baby deaths, and we can't veer <laughs> off of it. <laughs> I mean, he thinks he keeps going off of it. He goes, all right, dude, I'll calm it down. Uh, fertility rates are pretty low. and All right, dude, I'll take it easy. People are not having babies in other countries. And I'm like, good night, dude. Like, what are you? <laughs> Every sentence that comes out is just more babies that are not being born. I just want to make this final point and I'll move on. Yeah, I mean, you got to find, like, like you got a stance. Like you're running a... <laughs> Everyone thinks the world's global population, we're going to be way overpopulated. Yeah. Um, but according to UN research, it's going to stay, it's going to level off. And by the end of the century, we're going to be at 11 billion, which sounds like a lot, but, um, but it's not going to, we're not going to be overpopulated like a lot of people think. But go to Montana and there's plenty of room up there. Yeah. The overall population thing, I've never bought into that. I mean, that's when you go drive places, you're like, it's overpopulated in cities. Yeah. We have so much land. Anybody can go anywhere. You can drive. I mean, go to, I mean, go to, isn't there parts of, I mean, I drove across the country. You would drive in parts where like, there's no, they would say, I remember one place it said, you got to fill up for gas because there's not another gas station for 200 miles, maybe or hundred miles. I don't know. Yeah. You know, it could have been two exits, but <laughs> <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> I think it was like there's no more flying J's and it's just I was like ah no gas stations he goes nah there's BPs and stuff just no flying J's You're like I like a flying J he goes I know that's about 100 miles away you go alright they just don't do them right here and he goes nah it's just not they never really took off here uh, 
But I do remember driving in uh, – because I remember Laura got in an accident right when I uh, – she called me. And so but I'm not going to have any cell service as I was driving. And Harper was four or five months old, and Laura got uh, hit. Uh, just a little car accident. So she calls me and she's like, we got in a car accident. And I'm like, kind of like, what? Like, what's going on? And I'm I'm like entering an abyss. Yeah. And like the last thing for the abyss is like, we're in a car accident. And then that was like it. And then, uh, but it was, it was just like, it was nothing. Uh, okay. She was fine. What's the next graph we have? Not to uh, what he would have wanted, a baby survived that story. <laughs> uh, unlike what Brian drew before. So... <laughs> Uh, baby killer over here. <laughs> Go ahead and read the next thing. <laughs> That's good. Um, every day, 325,000 more people gain access to electricity. Wow. That's amazing. How many people? 325,000. That's awesome. Good uh, for them. As if they just cut it on now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first thing yeah, we see. first thing they hear is this podcast. <laughs> Hang one. Yeah, no, 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 right. <laughs> I'll go back. Uh, they go. That was right, overrated. We don't need it. <laughs> uh, 300, 000, every day, 300,000 more people gain access to clean drinking water. Wow. Good for them. Each day, an additional... <laughs> <laughs> that's, a very, that's a very funny thing to say. It's just a gigantic thing for me. Like, oh, it's good for them. It's good for them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, each day, an additional 650,000 people are able to get online for the first time. Access to internet. Yeah, good for them. Uh, that's a big one. That's a big one. Yep. They, they live in just a nice, easy life. To them, it is life is better. And they're like, wow, we get to check the internet. Everything's the worst. Yeah. Most people think 2020 was the worst year ever. It's actually, according to these statistics, the fourth best year ever. Ooh. The three best years were 2017, 2018, and 2019. In terms of so it's just every so the next year is like so what's the next one you're like will be 2018 19 yeah. 20 21 yeah <laughs> it just basically just keeps going is there ever one that skips I mean I think there's bound to be some like 2020 I think 2021 will probably get back to being the best yeah that'd be like 1993 you're like oh yeah that makes sense uh, yeah maybe 2020 is violence is way down conflicts are on the decline I mean. That shows there's been two major countries fighting with each other almost every year since the 1500s, but none of that's going on now for a while. When the Spanish flu happened in 1918, 1919, World War One was going on. So not only are you dealing with a major pandemic, you got a world war. Yeah. So you can't just tell everybody to stay six feet apart. Yeah, they're they're having to get after it. Uh, yeah, that's tough. And yeah, I mean, and that's how it spread so yeah. quickly. One. Because there's soldiers all over the world, and then when they came home, it it ticked up again. Well, it's hard to tell them. You had to send, you know, pigeons to <laughs> go get back. That's, that's how. And they don't even know where it originated from, but it was called the Spanish flu because Spain was not in World War One. They were neutral, so their news, all they were doing was reporting on the Sp- on the flu. Yeah. So everybody was like, "Golly, Spain is just." It's terrible over there. Where the countries involved in war, it said they were censoring their news to make it more positive. So they weren't sharing all this information. So it got called Spanish flu just because they were being more honest about yeah. what's happening. Yeah. Oh, that's why I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I would have said because they caused it directly. Yeah, it st- the first reported <laughs> so case was sounds like you go, started there. You go, yeah, because they started it because yeah. they hated us. Well, they made it in their labs, but. The first reported case was in the U.S. Actually, their really? Spanish labs of nineteen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, back then, in nineteen eighteen, medical professionals advised patients to take up to thirty grams a day of aspirin, a dose now known to be toxic. Wow, well, they could handle it back then. There's men back then. You can't <laughs> handle that much aspirin. Yeah. I would if I would if someone goes, don't take thirty to milligram of aspirin. I'd be like. Well, you need to be specific and say how many pills that yeah. is because I'm, I need you to be like, oh, don't take five of them, eight of them. What is it, 10 milligrams? Is no, it, you, you take, like, for you take like, an ibuprofen is like 200, 200 milligrams. <laughs> what did that say, 30? Uh, yeah, 30 grams, not milligrams, uh, grams. Yeah, gram. Come on. A gram. I mean, then you know what? I'm gonna, then I'm dead. I hope you're happy, aspirin, because I'm dead because you try to get because you want just That's 30 grams, dude. Since consensus today is the I dose. know, but you're, 
he's saying 30 grams. I know, but to go like, well, don't eat 30 grams of aspirin. And I'm like, well, it says milligrams, so I don't how, – what am I supposed to – I'm supposed to do the conversion <laughs> yeah. in my head? How much yeah. – what is – how many pills four, would that four be? Four grams is too many, it says now. And they were telling people to do 30 a day. What's – if 30 milligrams – how many milligrams makes up a gram? I have no idea. <laughs> a million? I'm, doing, I'm looking it up now. You're looking it a up. A thousand. So – so, yeah. so thirty grams times a thousand is thirty thousand. Huh? I'm talking it out loud in my head yeah. as I'm doing it. Thirty thousand divided by that's three hundred thousand. Oh yeah, thirty. <laughs> this is how we get the wrong statistics. <laughs> That'd be a hundred and fifty pills, a uh, two hundred milligram yeah. pills. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. They were telling people to take that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's worse than the doctors <laughs> telling like a pregnant woman to smoke. Like they're just going, you need to take 150 pills. Can you imagine being a doctor back then? And you don't just go, you go, you should take, what was it they saying? 30 grams? 30 grams. You should take 30 grams of aspirin. And then the guy is like me that goes, all right, but I don't really know. Like, so how, what is it? How many pills is that? He goes, it's 150. <laughs> And you don't think one doctor goes, that just doesn't sound right. <laughs> sounds like way too many. When I hear it like that, that sounds like way too many. <laughs> like he goes, I've been saying 30 grams, so I don't think, you know, I kind of got used to it and I don't think about it. And then when you when you made me break it down, see, it's guys like me that are dumb that come in and save the world. Because right? we go, well, I don't, you know, because the doctor's like just signing out. Here's 30 grams of uh, take away. Like, he doesn't know. And then I just go, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I didn't go to, I mean, dude, if I couldn't make it out of high school in 20, in 1997, I definitely probably, I mean, I would have never made it out. Of that. <laughs> I would have made it through second grade in the 1900s. So I'm going to have to be like, you got to break that down a little bit more than what you just wrote. And he's going to say 150 pills. And I go, you want me to take 150 pills? Two to three times a day. Two to three times a day. <laughs> you want to take 150? 150. Take yeah. I go, dude, I don't – You is a, so just eat them? Just eat these all day? Is that what you want me to do? Do you want me to go – should I go – you're saying like – so when I go to the movies and they go, do you want candy? I go, no, I got to I gotta take – I'm, I'm, I'm kind of eating aspirin right now. So it's kind, of, it's kind of my thing. And everybody's like – finally they go, yeah, that is too much. This says many of the deaths attributed to the Spanish flu were actually caused by aspirin poisoning. I mean, on the news, they're telling you you need 150 of them. <laughs> they don't even sell that in a bottle. Yeah. yeah, I mean, 100, I think, coming to, you know. Can you imagine going, or do you buy the ones that are like the 10? It only sells you 10 aspirin? Oh, yeah. I'll take uh, 15 of those, please. Are you, is this for like a month? You're like, no, before I oh, get to my car. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, yeah I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> are they in stock? You guys get it? That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Uh. People are working fewer hours. Um, 31 of the richest countries in the world says 14% decline in hours worked per week per worker. There we go. Ooh, there's more work getting done, though. That's what I want to know. Uh, I think so. I think I think sometimes more wrong work getting done. Yeah. More work's being done. A lot of uh, – I have a theory there's a lot of uh, procrastination going on and a lot of just, like, nonsense work getting done like i don't think stuff's getting as a uh stuff doesn't get finished like it should even whether whatever it is you think more so now than before like years ago yeah i've never you know obviously i never thought about what was getting done years ago but <laughs> but they they wrote songs getting stuff done isn't that a song <laughs> you know uh, i think now think about all the bad songs a lot more bad songs get written. Like a lot more just nonsense can put out. Like in it's in songs now, the words aren't words being taken out of songs. Like it's just like a chorus, and then they just yell by the whole time. <laughs> this just, is your example. Yeah. <laughs> think about you think he's gonna go that the bomber guy played downtown, which is like basically uh, he is just talking because it's all lyrics. Yeah. He can't play something now that's just. It's eight words. Yeah. The song has eight words. <laughs> uh -huh. And then just sounds. Uh -huh. Like gibber. They call it gibberish. Yeah. Work, 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 work. That would have been work, weird. Work, yeah. Work, work, work. Yeah, just saying that over again. He's like, you, you'll be confused by the messaging. You'd hear it so much. Uh -huh. It's all like gibberish rap. They talk about gibberish rap, how it's just 
I've never heard of that. Mumble yeah, rap? I mumble have... rap. Oh, okay. Oh, Hannibal did gibberish rap, I think. Oh, okay. All right. But mumble rap or something. Yeah. No one could have also. But that's that's almost like you said you're not into the words for music, right? So it's just if you're just making noises, that's good enough, right? But this is some of the best music I've ever heard in my life right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we finally got rid of it. Since this podcast launched. Yeah. Look, I think, I think we had too many words. He wrote a song. I wrote a song. Are we going to get to hear that? Uh, yeah. Walker Hayes. Me and Walker Hayes wrote a song. About uh, for the podcast? You know, after I talked about it, no, he heard it on the podcast that I said I wanted to write a song. Yeah. And then me and him got together and we wrote a song. Have you recorded anything? Yeah. Yeah. We talk, uh, I have the song. When I'm not playing it. I don't know. I have to, and now, now I'm going to tell him now. Can you tell us anything about it? Uh, no, it's, it's not. Uh, it's, it's, it's a country. It's a country song. It's not. Uh, it's not like funny or anything. It's like trying okay. to be like yeah. trying to be like a What's serious song. What's it about? Song. Yeah, uh, just a, a relationship. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's like it's talking about it, just a, a like a boy and girl, husband wife. Okay, anything like that. A love song. Yeah, love song. Love song. All right. Love song. Yeah. I had trouble when they said, "What's the genre?" I was like, "You know, like husband wife." They go, "Like a, so romantic." I go, "Oh yeah, yeah." That's the word. See, that's the the good thing that he talks about me using. Well, good. Yeah. I don't use the word that the, the like the word that moves everything along. They, I, I make you have to think about it. <laughs> that's why you do it. That's why I do it. And it was a good experience. It was a well experience. Uh, <laughs> Uh, farming technology has improved so much that we can now provide more food with less farmland. Um, farmers today can produce. I feel like everything. There's, there's one guy listening to this that hates everything that we've mentioned. <laughs> like he thinks we're all of it's the problem. Yeah, you know the people have written books about it, and they all get pushback. A guy did a TED talk. People don't like it. Hearing that the world's good. Yeah, they yeah. don't like it, especially if it's they coming don't. from a, a, a wealthy white man saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because they think you're obviously. saying everything's fine. That's why, it's obviously, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what if everybody just gets behind this and they just show him reading all this and they're like, all right, man, I believe it now, you know? I believe it. Uh, <laughs> he would have hair you know that was always the, uh, LeBron like if someone was so rich like that's you think that with Tiger Woods you know people that get hair uh, LeBron's got his hairline LeBron James I was going to say his own LeBron James uh, <laughs> but his hairline is now farther than it was mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, but Tiger Woods still still bald Tiger he gets to wear a hat though he gets I know but you still just think Tiger Woods has a billion dollars Yeah, he can get it done but it makes me almost like with Tiger Tiger's just like kind of a nerdy. He's not a. He's cool because we because him and his image and all this stuff. But Tiger's kind of just like a nerdy dude that's kind of his own. Like I don't think Tiger thinks to, that he would ever think to get the hair. Yeah, he'd be like, I don't, I don't care. I think he's also if you're playing golf, you're with a lot, you're with older, older men, right? You're playing. LeBron's playing with a bunch of eighteen year olds. That's that the world you're in. To do you don't think being, not at being all. in a world of young people with no, I think he wears a hair? hat, and LeBron doesn't wear a hat would be more. I don't think he's going. Tiger. Well, I like, made that point earlier, and you dismissed it. So I'm trying to come no. with another good point. <laughs> that was a good point. Uh, okay. I didn't. I didn't. Sorry, I didn't. Yes. Good job, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> That's well all done. I ever want to do. Yeah. That's all I ever uh, needed. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Disregard my other yeah, point. Yeah, the, the other I'm point. I'm going to double down on the hat thing. Yeah. Uh, Tucker <laughs> plays more bald people, so he probably wants to be bald, right? <laughs> <laughs> like he feels out of place. Is that is that the... Yeah, I was just saying that maybe there's less pressure. Well, the definitely because he can always it. wear a hat. But, I mean, they the thing yeah. is they have to take their hat off to uh, when they shake hands. Yeah. And that's, you know... Wasn't there a hair company that wanted to sponsor podcasts and wanted me to do a trial? Uh yeah, they might still be in play. I don't know. Oh. You know? No, I don't. Know. Yeah, didn't you want? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. were you gonna do it? <laughs> no. I didn't you, want to. Would you do it? Uh, hey, if you want me to do it for the podcast, but my wife do you want, want me more to. hair? At this you, point, no. You don't, don't care. No, Your wife doesn't I'm, want you I'm to. It had like a list of side effects. Oh there. really? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, better looking. Is that the side effects? <laughs> <laughs> More money. <laughs> you lift weights heavier. You're like, I don't know. What's the problem? Oh. I'd like to see some of these. Side you would do it, and you would only get the side effects. <laughs> like, it would be so much. He would just be all side effects. 
that it's like the only, like you'd be reading. Well, here's the good things that again is is just like those are possibilities. <laughs> like you can get more air, and you're like, that's a that's you know. You, we would talk about the actual effects as side effects, and the, yeah. the side effects would be like, you really need to focus on those side effects, dude. Like it's it's gonna be. A serious thing. I just envisioned that Seinfeld where George ordered that stuff from China yeah. and Kramer was putting it on his hand there video in it. That'd yeah. be you doing it to me. Yeah. We got you a bud. The- <laughs> uh, you want one more? Yeah. What are we? Are we at? We're about uh, an hour yeah. 50 yeah. right now. All right. Um, education. Education is way up around the world. Uh, is there, what, how many more of these do you have that is positive? Like, is there a few more? You had a lot more? Um, there's more democracies in the world than ever before. Yeah. As today, about half of the human population is living in a democracy. Yeah, that's good. Um, let's see. Or maybe it's not good. No, it's good. Violent crime is... So is I'm trying to think the other guy that goes. Yeah. Yeah, is it good? <laughs> Violent crime has dropped dramatically. I think I already covered that. Yeah, risen oh. during COVID, but... In the United States, yeah. it's up this year, this year especially in cities. Overall, 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 it's way down since 1990. Yeah. Like by seven, yeah. 75% or something. Wow. Yeah. I think it's because they uh, you can't pump your sneakers anymore with the tongue. Everybody was still in those sneakers. <laughs> and now, <laughs> I don't know. I, just maybe, I used to have those sneakers in the 90s. I thought 90s, and I'm like, what did I have in the 90s? And I thought that, you remember the shoe that you would... You would pump it and it'd fill air in your. Can you imagine presenting that theory in front of Congress <laughs> or something? Hey, Mike, this is a, yeah. just a proposal. Look, <laughs> I think I'd, I'd have a hill to climb, but you know, I beg, that's how it started. But this is why I'm here. You guys remember those shoes that you. <laughs> <laughs> and they got, not just show a picture. I go, I didn't bring anything. Uh, remember those shoes? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, you can bring anything, any picture. There go. We're looking up on our phone. No, I don't want to connect my phone to the Bluetooth. Uh, uh, I'll just describe them. And he's like, I know. Could someone else look it up? Because I really have the description in my head, and you guys are not giving me the chance to describe it. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, you want more? I've been just doing some quick broad strokes of just positive, you know. Um, all right. Uh, a lot of stuff. We didn't get into anything. <laughs> yeah, I all this research. We talked about yeah. turtle lifespan for about 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just sitting here like, man, I spent my whole week, Christmas morning. I'm just yeah. Well, what do you up- think is, it, I don't think animals' <laughs> lifespans have gone up. Uh, <laughs> I think they've stayed consistently the same. Generally or speaking. Worse, honestly. Our, our, our gotten worse. We're doing great. We're doing great. But in the violence category, we have zoos where we laugh at them. <laughs> Look how good we're doing now. We used to be scared of lions, and now we throw paper cups at them. <laughs> oh, how the tide has turned. <laughs> That's what I say to. All right. Uh, so I'll do the last one here. Education, enrollment, all education levels way up around the world. It was 74% just making it through primary school in 1970. I don't even know what that would be. I didn't, I didn't either. No, it's like elementary. Yeah, yeah. I had to look that up. See, I knew that. All across all levels, this went up. A half a century ago, the majority of the world's people were illiterate. Now, almost 90% of adults can read. I mean, yeah, so we're getting there, buddy. We're getting there. We're I mean, still at uh, 33% of this room has trouble with it. <laughs> um, Is that right? 33%? Yeah. 33.33 repeat. Yeah. Well, yeah. you guys get et cetera. 33 et cetera percent. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you say et cetera? <laughs> you don't think et cetera works right there? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what you mean. For numbers? Yeah. For numbers. Et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera, well, et cetera. 33.33, et cetera. <laughs> well, because the three just keep going, right? They do. They do keep going. That's true. Yeah, I never I've thought never of it that way. Like that. Yeah. You just put a little line on top, and it means repeating. Pi is. I've never seen that line. I don't think people are using that. I think people are using. I that. don't think people are using. It. I, I, I don't. <laughs> you think know people. what I'm talking about? Pi is three point one four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to remember it. That is a good. That's what you should tell a teacher, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. He goes, I know, but let's get into it a little bit. Do we need to? You know they keep going. <laughs> All right. All right. Well. <laughs> it's a great time to be alive. Yeah. It's the best time ever to be alive. <laughs> Unless you're a turtle is what we figured out. 
uh, are a pocket gopher. <laughs> Those guys are having some pretty rough times. So just <laughs> donate some money, guys, to the pocket gophers, to the Jeff Lee off mouses. Not your, if you see a house mouse, don't give them money. Those guys are doing a lot better than they're letting on. Look up, find a specific mouse that is struggling, and then donate money to him and your pocket gophers. Uh, all right, yeah, 2020. It's been a fun year. Look, we still we we got this podcast. Another thing, being able to talk to all you guys too has been uh, better for us. I mean, yeah. truly, all the comments we get, we uh, you know we go through them. They're very very funny, and they're, they're I mean, how funny they are is uh, truly the, the the all the folks that listen to this. I can't tell you enough how when you see comments and comments on YouTube and all stuff, they're always so negative and usually awful. And the fact that you guys write these that uh are very funny that we read them we know a lot of people love hearing these even more than the episode but that's enormous man that's that's a pretty crazy thing to experience but that you know that's what i love seeing and that means that we have the best people ever that listen to this and we're all the same we're all just sitting here listening to this dumb nonsense uh so look i hope 2021 uh just continues to get better for you and uh, we will we will talk to you. Will we be wait? Will we be twenty twenty one. Will be the next podcast. Yeah, it will. And you got a special coming out in twenty twenty one. Twenty one twenty one. I have a special coming out. He's getting married. He, you're getting yeah, married. Yeah, maybe. Let's we'll see. see. We'll see. Uh, we got a poll on that. If you guys want to <laughs> vote, if Aaron can do it or not, or if Lucy figures it out and <laughs> finds someone better. Uh, and then you have a show. Do we have showed you off shows or anything. I'm headlining yeah. Zanies January 13th. January 13th. So Aaron Headline Weber Zanies. and friends come out. Yeah. It'd be great. I'm hoping. Brian's to, wide open. Yep. 2021, uh, I am wide open. Yeah. 2021, anybody <laughs> wants to book Brian, uh, <laughs> a.k.a. Baby Killer. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, all right. This is. Thank you guys again. Always, we love you. And we will see you next year. 